I had to leave at 12.15, the party. Why'd you have to leave? Because she had to go to the hospital. They thought she had That's a broken neck. That's why you got neck. the medical tent. The medical... Like, hey, send them off. So, I'm, this so, is my party. So, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> On today's part of my take, we have Michael Rubin from <laughs> formerly of the Philadelphia 76ers, co-owned it with Josh Harris, new owner of the Commanders. We're going to talk some NBA, NHL, FAQs. Um, and we, uh, got some other things we're going to get to, and we are brought to you by our friends at Morgan and Morgan. If you've been injured in an accident, Morgan and Morgan makes it easy for you. File a claim online, upload pictures, evidence, text your lawyer, get a settlement direct deposited and do almost everything from your phone. Morgan and Morgan is America's largest injury law firm, over 800 lawyers nationwide, over $15 billion recovered so far over 100 offices, over 30 years of experience. The fee is free. You only pay if you win. And with Morgan & Morgan's track record, these are the guys you want to trust. So visit forthepeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law, pound law to start a claim today. Visit forthepeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law to start a claim today. Morgan & Morgan if you have an accident or you've been injured, hit them up right now. They are the best in the business. One more time, forthepeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law to start a claim today. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Wednesday, April 19th. Uh, we are on Zoom today, and uh, PFT, talk to the people. Yeah, um, so we're on Zoom right now. I'm down in Virginia. My, uh, my dad passed away uh, this morning, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do if, if I wanted to do part of my take today um, at first. And I, I know a lot of you guys at home probably use this show as you know an escape or – to get you through tough times sometimes and laugh and, and forget about real issues every now and again. And uh, that's kind of the boat that I found myself in today uh, where I, I felt like it would be good. It's, you know, we're recording this late at night, been taking care of family stuff all day. And I, I thought it would be a good escape for me and maybe be able to laugh a little bit and, and chop it up and, and kind of get away from the real life situation and, uh, you know, I feel the same way that, you know, we, we've heard from a lot of people over the years. I feel the same way now. So um, thank you guys for being there for me. I appreciate that. Uh, that goes for obviously everybody uh, in the studio on the show. I appreciate you guys uh, being an outlet for this and also everybody at home listening. And um, I know I've talked about my dad a few times on the show, but he really is the reason why. Uh, I grew to love sports. He would, you know, let me miss class and and stay home from school in the morning sometimes to watch Sports Center. And most of my childhood memories revolved somehow around, you know, playing sports with him, uh, going to sporting events with him, or having him uh, prank me into going to a sporting event that wasn't real with him. Which uh, it, it's kind of funny. I was talking with my family today, and, and we were, you know, joking around and and laughing about some of the some of the uh, funny things that he did over the years. And, and that story, the April Fool's story got brought up where he, uh, he got me out of class. And um, I, it turns out I didn't even get the real crux of the joke until just today. The real crux of the joke, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, was there was no game on uh, April 1st that year, April Fool's Day, when he got me out of class to take me to the Orioles game. The real crux of the joke, my brother just told me this today, was – the joke was I should have known that the Orioles didn't have a home opener on April 1st. And I don't know ball cause I'm a casual. So that's, <laughs> that's what he was. That's what he was driving at, but he was busting my balls um, when, when he did that. And he was a funny guy. And if anybody knew him, they knew he was the guy who was usually wearing a track suit and usually uh, taking me or my brother to sporting events. We had the van that was stocked with every sort of sports equipment you could ever hope for growing up. Um, and he was, he really, he taught me how to love sports and he was a fan of you guys too. He loved, he loved you guys. And, um, he also loved like all the AWLs that he would meet when he'd go out and, and start chopping up with somebody about sports. If they looked like they were a younger person, he would ask him like, do you guys listen to part of my take? And, 
uh, then he would, you know, go on to tell them that, oh, PFT is my son and, and he'd make a new friend. And he would then, you know, he'd always give me a call and let me know who he met that way. And um, it meant a lot to him. And, and sports were, you know, like I said, they were a, a big part of our lives. And um, I, I owe so much to him. He was a great dude. So going to miss him. And, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. The, la- the last thing I will say, though, is um, eye for an eye, well played John Rahm. Uh, tremendous competitor. I'll make that joke before anybody else does. About that shit. So it, it's oh okay. I know some people are going to wonder if it's okay to make that joke. So I'll be the first one to make it. It is okay. He would have thought that was funny. But um, yeah, so that, that's where I'm at personally right now. And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope you guys will understand if me, we'll probably do another Skype show or Zoom show later on this week. Some things might change with, uh, with the formatting, but yeah, um, yeah, I appreciate you guys being there for me. So, love you guys. Yeah. Love you, PFT. Yeah, love you too, man. I mean, it's, it's you know. Love you. I don't, it's it's a horrible thing that everyone obviously eventually has to go through. But I just, you know, I know your dad. I, we, we got to meet him a couple times. I know how proud he was of this show. And, like, that was just so cool to see because I'm sure – you know, we're, we're very similar. There's probably moments where our parents were like, are they actually going to have a career here? And for him to see it get to the point where it's gotten. And, you know, when we met him at training camp, he was wearing the track suit. Mm-hmm. He was proud. And it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was clear that he was so proud of everything you've done. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you hurt, we hurt. So it's, yeah, it's real life shit sometimes, but, uh, but yeah, appreciate you guys. And yeah, he was, uh, he was a big fan of, of yours and just, uh, he was really supportive. There were some times when he didn't really understand what a podcast was and whether or not this was going to be, you know, something that I was going to really take seriously. Um, but he was also like the most, most supportive person in the world. And he was like, go for it if it makes you happy. And, um, I was really, really lucky to have him as a dad. So uh, if, if you're on the fence about calling your dad today, give him a call. Tell him you love him. Um, permission to make another lighthearted joke? Yes. Uh, we can cut it out, but um, he he did pass away without ever seeing Hank get the lottery ball. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it's true, Hank. That's not as fucked up. Oh, man. But, yeah, PFT, we love you. You know we love you. And uh, it's it's tough because it definitely is like – we are we've been doing this for a long time so we are family and so whenever you know something like this happens to any of us it's it's really really tough so but he 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 i i I just remember you telling me how proud he was of this show and it was very clear that picture of him with the tracksuit was Mm -hmm. like i was like that's that's a dad who's just like my my son fucking rocks so at the at the at the camp of the team you guys rooted for growing up yeah, That's yeah, how we, it was. Th- that was that was very a very cool moment, a little behind the scenes when we went to uh, the I guess it was the football team. It was a Washington football team at the time. We went to the training camp and interviewed Ron Rivera and, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, I got my dad in and got to introduce him to Fitzy and, and some of the guys uh, behind the scenes. And that's where we used to go every summer when I was a kid. Me and him would go to uh, to Redskins training camp probably, I don't know, 10, 12 times each year and, and watch the team practice. And uh, it was very cool to, like, show them around and to, you know, kind of full circle moment in a way that way. So, um, yeah, a lot of emotions. I'm going through a, a lot of different things right now, some up, some down. Um, but it's been uh, – it, it's good to have you guys around. It's good to have an outlet where hopefully we can – I mean, we've already – told some pretty fucking sick jokes today so uh maybe maybe laugh Rom. once or twice john Rom was... <laughs> john Rom, i didn't even think about i mean and i, mean... I know how your brain works you probably <laughs> thought of it like 9 30 this morning you're like ah oh, john no, Rom's no, dead. I, <laughs> no I, I actually i when we were talking before the show about something else related to john Rom, i was like oh fuck yeah okay <laughs> all right we'll have something to talk about if, if we ever if we ever meet the guy yeah um, okay, so let's try to make you laugh. Let's try to have some fun. Uh, stop me if you heard this before, but Draymond Green assaulted someone again, and he's suspended. So the news just came down. He's suspended for game three, which I actually hate because, well, one, I don't think he should have been suspended, but two, 
now Warriors fans can be like, well, we've never lost a series when when Steph, Clay, and Draymond played the whole series. Okay, so I I like and hate that he was suspended at the same time. I don't think he should have been suspended for it because he got he got his foot grabbed. And it wasn't even that hard of a stomp. Yeah, he's a big guy, and you probably shouldn't step on another man's sternum intentionally. But at the same time, like his foot was being grabbed. You got to get the guy off you somehow. I think it should have been it should have been a flagrant. I don't think he should have been suspended. But then I I love the fact that when he got kicked out of the game, he, they just let Draymond spend like what felt like fifteen minutes on the court, yeah. just antagonizing the fans openly. That was an awesome moment. That might have been why he got suspended. Did Shams say exactly why, Jake? Because like, if you if you're Adam Silver, that felt more out of line of what they're trying to preach on, like the you know player fan interaction than the actual stomp. That credit to Sabonis, I thought he like broke his sternum the way he was acting, and then he got up and he was fine. What were you gonna say, Hank? Well, one Sabonis basically acted like he got the like the whatever you call him, the EMT thrown into thrown into his heart. Defibrillator. Yeah. 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 Tamar yeah. Hamlin was watching like, hell Shout yeah. Tamar Hamlin, but he's back. Draymond, but, uh, Draymond Green should attend every youth sporting event in America <laughs> yeah, to make sure that he can revive somebody. <laughs> to, to Big Cat's point, I, it might have been the moment when they were zooming in on Draymond, looking at the crowd, and just him going, pussy! Yeah. At, yeah. at the guy that was flipping him off. It was but also... <laughs> at the same time, Draymond looked like he was having the time of his life when he was yeah. screaming at the crowd. Like he, I, I think that's good for NBA fan interaction. Oh, yeah. it's, it's not good when you have Russell Westbrook uh, just finding somebody backstage and a, a poor little kid who's eating a slice of ham with his, with his teeth and then going up to his dad and calling his dad a motherfucker. That's bad. That's bad for the league. But having Draymond just get up in the crowd's face and smiling and screaming at him, I think that's good. That's the good type of fan interaction that you want. He Draymond is like he has like Joker energy where he just not not Djokovic or uh uh what's what the fuck? Uh, it's late. Not Jokic. Jokic, but Joker like the actual Heath Ledger like he just wants to see every like the chaos because that was there was a moment there where it was like this is how the Malice of the Palace kind of started. If someone if a fan throws something here, this could get bad. I also loved Jordan Poole's face standing there, and he was like, Draymond was going crazy, like whooping it up, and Jordan Poole was kind of like laughing along, like, ha, 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 like, this is actually what it looked like right before I got punched in the face, so I'm just going to be on his side here and be like, hey, this is cool, this is funny, Draymond, like, good one, dude. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it People was crazy. It was that. a crazy yeah. scene. Yeah. I well, that's the thing. It's like Draymond Green. So Sabonis so did grab his leg. I don't think he should have been suspended, but if there's one guy who you can be like, oh, he has a history of just, like, kicking people in the nuts, stomping on people, punching his teammate in the face, he is the guy. So I don't – you can't – Draymond can't, like, be like, oh, I that was a totally out-of-character act by me. That was as much in character as you can get for Draymond Green in an NBA basketball game. Yeah, he's got method. Says he's always – in he's got method in terms of acting like Draymond Green all the time. Yeah. Jake? What do you say, Jake? Yeah, the press release says the suspension was based in part of Green's history of unsportsmanlike acts. So yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So I, I yeah. don't think he should have been suspended uh, for for either one of the acts, for the antagonizing or for the stomping. But I am a little bit happy that he got suspended because that means that when he comes back in game four, we're going to get full Draymond. He's going to just yes. be going nuts on the court. So I, I'm happy about that. Uh, you make a good point. The Warriors fans can be like, oh, the, the, the series doesn't count, even though, the, the, you know what? It, the, but Kings fans can be like straight up. Here's a here's a stat. Uh, in game one, it was 105, 105 with five minutes, 50 seconds left in this game. Uh, it was 95, 95 with five minutes, 50 seconds left. So the Kings have scored the Warriors in the final 550 of games one and two by a combined 40 to 29. So the Kings have just been better down the stretch. I think that was David Locke that tweeted that out, but they've just been they've just been better at closing games out. Here's another stat because it will Warriors fans will I think most Warriors fans won't do this, but you know there will be the trolls being like, yeah, they, you know, Raptors series everyone got hurt. Uh, you know, the the Cavs in 2016, Draymond got suspended. They never lost with those three guys. The craziest part, the craziest stat I saw, this breaks the streak. 
the Warriors have not been down 2-0 in a series in 27 straight series. 27 straight playoff series, they haven't been down 2-0. In the first two games in those 27 straight playoff series, they're like something like 43-11, and 11 or, or I might have my math wrong, but it's – no, that's right, 43-11. and 11. It's crazy. They have been – they never get in this hole, and they're in this hole. And you're right, PFT, like the way they – the way the Kings have played down the stretch. Kings didn't even play – I think that was the second or third worst shooting night they've had all year. Like they didn't even play that great. And they beat the Warriors, and the Warriors are officially on the rope. And this is another one of those like, I don't, I don't put that much stock in regular season, in terms of like a team can take load management, all this stuff. But the Warriors sucked on the road all year, and they sucked in on the road in the playoffs. Like we, they should have, we should have believed them when they told us they can't play on the road. Also, we should have paid more attention to the beam this year because the beam is intense. Lighting the beam, it's it's an X factor. That is the that's the rally monkey of these playoffs. Like the beam is fucking sick when they when they shoot it up into outer space. I don't know how high it's it awesome. goes. I just assume it goes like all the way to the moon. But it's so it's awesome. I love it. Kings just have good vibes. You saw Delhi on the bench almost died last time he played against Steph Curry, and he was coaching the guys up, getting in their ears. They just seem – they're such a fun team. They're young. They're young. They're fun, Billy. What were you going to say? Uh, just last thing on the Sabonis thing, that's a total, uh, like, soccer move. Like, that's what soccer oh, yeah. players do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, No, no, but yeah. even the Pretend grabbing of the legs on the ground. Yeah. It's very European. And then pretending you're dead yeah. afterwards. Like, that's totally European. <laughs> The the uh, beam PFT. I, I read an article about the beam. Uh, the owner of the Kings did it. I thought it was going to be some really cool story. Like some little kid was like, "Oh, wouldn't it be cool if like a flashlight? There's a big flashlight." No, it, unfortunately, it's not. They did like a focus group and, ha- and like hired like a PR firm. But the one cool fact that I saw out of it was uh, they had uh, the owner of the Kings. Like in this focus group and, and all this talk about like what they're going to do, uh, someone pointed out that Virgin Atlantic, the airline, they have those purple lights or the, it, it might be blue lights that you walk in and you feel like you're on a VIP like club. Yeah. And he basically, the owner of the Kings was like, I want that everywhere in the arena. I want just make purple lights everywhere. It's smart. And they did that. And it does look cool. It's smart. Like, it because looks fucking cool. If you've ever been on Virgin Atlantic, you know that it's just a relaxing flight from start to yeah. finish. It's, yeah. I, okay. I wish I didn't know that it was a focus group, but I still love the beam. That's how good it yeah. is. It's no, like, the beam rules. it's completely artificial and, and created out of nowhere by a bunch of suits. But guess what? It still looks like God's bidet when it shoots up into the sky. And I'm still all in on the beam. Yeah, and the beam, the first time the beam ever was lit, it was during the day, so it didn't really work. And then this, the first time it was lit at night, they had, like, a bunch of calls to, like, the police and, like, the radio stations being like, what is going on in the sky right now? There's a huge purple beam. It's- so I'm all in on the beam. The beam is great. The Herder, I think, started the beam team hashtag. So, like, yeah, the the, the Kings are a true vibes team. It's. I had a. I had a little debate online this morning about bandwagons. I mean, we're not. We're not Kings fans, but like, if you are a Kings fan that has gotten away from the team, get back on the bandwagon. Bandwagons make sports fun. Yeah. This is a fun. This is a fun story. I hope they go deep. I hope they take down the Warriors. Even though I have money on the Warriors, that's how fun they are. Like I bet on the Warriors last night, and I wasn't that mad because I was like, damn, this Kings team is so much fun, and these fans look like they're having the best time of their life. Yeah, the, the best compliment you can get as a team is that people with absolutely no horse in the race are watching every single game that you play, and you're like, I fucking wish I was a Kings fan. It'd be so cool yeah. to be a Kings fan right now. So uh, I hope that said, I hope, they don't, I hope they don't blow it. I really do, because I'd like to see them advance. Uh, but when Draymond comes Knocked back, when Draymond comes back game four, it's going to be – it, you're going to see – he's going to be fully jokerified by that point. One last thing about this game uh, that should be – because, you know, Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox get a lot of talk and Sabonis. Davion Mitchell is an awesome defender. He was, like, doing a very – I mean, Steph, you, you, Steph will always get, you know, his points, but he was awesome. And I went and I looked it up. He has an incredible nickname. Does anyone know his nickname here? No. His nickname is Off Night. That's a great nickname for a defense guy. Yeah, it is. Off Night. Yeah, he's like, when you come play me, it's your Off Night. I like that a lot. Yeah. So I was just like, damn, that's an awesome nickname. That's a nickname that should get more love, Off Night. 
I don't know if they're a team of destiny yet, but they're what's what's the JV version of no, the team I, of I destiny? No, I don't. Uh, yeah, because here's they're they're team probably of not going to win the series. Here's they're a team well, of no, fun. Here's like the, here's what's going to unfortunately happen. A this is where of well, no, 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 Hank, I, I, Hank, you know, Hank's right. Hank, I, I am getting caught up in in the beam. I'm I'm trapped. Here's in, what's I'm trapped happen. in the beam right now. Here's what's going to happen, and this is if you're a Kings fan, skip a minute down the podcast because you don't want to hear this. They are going to beat the Warriors in this series. It's going to be a great story. It's going to be an incredible story. The first team to take down the Warriors. The Lakers are then going to beat them. And it's going to be all the bad memories from all the from that series. And everything is going to get brought back up. And it, that's what's going to happen. Like, it's perfectly set up for a team to, like, capture the hearts of America. And then the Lakers to basically have us relive the worst moment in Kings history and then just do it again. No, yeah, I think we, I think we even called that shot when we had Kirk on the on the podcast the other day. Yeah, where like Scott Foster comes in and just hands Game Six and Seven to the Lakers. Yeah, yeah, it's it. I don't want it to happen. By the way, uh, if people haven't picked up the Grizzlies or sorry, the Nuggets uh, Timberwolves series will probably be the series we just never talk about because it's going to be like weird uh, timing, off nights, that stuff. But the, the shout out to Nuggets, they killed the, the Timberwolves. Timberwolves, I think, what did they score, like 85 points? They didn't even, they got smoked. Yeah, my, my Nuggets look great. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, uh, other games. Um, we should talk about Nets Sixers on Monday night. Max, uh, you won. The, the Nets are not good. The Nets, it's, it's funny because the Nets are, you look at them and you're like, that's a team that could really use like one or two stars, like a Kevin Durant or a Kyrie Irving, because they, they have just some really good role players. And Mikhail Bridges is a better than a role player, but they, they like built the whole plane out of role players. And you can see it when you're watching a playoff game and they can't, they, they struggle to score 90 points. My question for you, Max, though, we saw a playoff James Harden in game two. Yeah, no, I... He scored eight points. My take of (laughs) playoff James Harden is dead died (laughs) last night because he was so, so bad. And I was so So excited after Saturday. And then last night, I mean, he, like, didn't even belong on the court. But thank God God called him. Yeah, Coward called him a, a role player with a shoe deal. Yeah, yeah, he was bad. He was, he was so bad. <laughs> it was but, tough. Uh, it was tough. Yeah, no. But you're going to win the series. Yeah, no, the Nets are, like, not – they're just, like, not a good team. I think if the Sixers were playing any other team in the playoffs, they'd probably lose that game. And I, if they're playing any good team in the playoffs, they lose by 30. I also get yeah. – I get a little bit worried every time Joel Embiid falls down. He seems – like, he grimaces hard every time he hits the ground. He's a big dude, and he weighs – he's, like, heavy as shit – but when he falls down and he gets up every single time, you're like, is this guy injured? You have to pause for a second. He does you it. They should cancel charges. Try I to do. Cancel charges. Okay. What? So I, I talk, I talked to cancel culture's coming for him. I don't no, agree. Listen, I talk, I talked to Titus about this. I think it was in the national championship game. And we came to the conclusion that they should cancel charges. If you step in front of a guy and put your hands in front of your nuts, it be for two reasons. One, that's not a defense. Pussy. It's not a defensive move. You can't make a defensive play if your hands are covering your balls. And also, you should be willing to get hit in the nuts to take a charge. That should be part of the price that you pay. If you want that foul bad enough, you'll stick your boys out there and take a knee to them. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I just like saying cancel charges because my college basketball team is built. The whole house is built on charges. So uh, mm-hmm. people get really mad when I say that. But, yeah, cancel charges. Fuck charges. But, yeah, the um, – the Sixers did look bad, but a win's a win. Um, quick b-ball Paul update. Uh, he was electric as usual. I think he was three for four. He also, I'm just going to read a couple tweets for, he had a great for dunk, everyone though. out there because he had a great dunk. B-ball Paul, we talked about it on Sunday, but he created a Twitter account when he was about, I don't know, 12 years old. And uh, so he has like the, he has all these tweets that are from a bygone era where tweet, Twitter was just updating whatever's going on in your life. Like I searched it and, and he has a tweet from August, 2013 that just says sore throat. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. Sore throat. So he, he, he's the best, but he had a couple, 
couple bangers. One was I come watch TV, go outside, come back in, come back in, masturbate 15 minutes, do homework, watch TV again, and eat. Tell me if this is not what all boys do. That's fast. This is a, a 13 year old b ball That's fast. In 2012. It's so true. He's just it's it's the best. I hate the dentist. The shit is so nasty. <laughs> Watching this Harry Potter movie, what the fuck is Slytherin? Mm. Uh, this one actually is suspect. This is actually the first time I was like, what is going on with people? Paul, he just had one that said up all night watching George Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, George Lopez is funny. Uh, people, Paul, it, it, people, Paul, doesn't sound like a goaded, like a, goaded sitcom. It doesn't sound like a, a screen name from like a law and order episode where they're like, they're going through like a, a high school kids, like social media profile. And they're like, B-Ball Paul, yeah, the star of the basketball team. This is <laughs> these are all his thoughts. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we will get him. We we will get him on the show at some point. I I do. I would like to ask him if he just went to DePaul because he's like they named a school after me. Because I wouldn't be surprised. Because <laughs> that would make perfect sense. One last one. He said, "Just had some good ass spaghetti. Hope I spelled it right." Like that's just people. Did he spell it right? It's hard. Yeah, he spelled it right. It's hard word to spell. That's impressive. That's I always just say pasta. Yeah. That's that's honestly pretty good. And he was 13 years old and spelled spaghetti correctly. Yes, he did. He did. So, um, yeah, we're gonna hopefully do a merch deal with B-Ball Paul. I did buy a, a sweatshirt from him today, um, which means I literally Venmoed him a hundred dollars and sent him my address. That's how he's doing it. He's he's selling his sweatshirts. He he tweeted before the playoffs. Hit me up if you want one hundred bucks. And people, Max said that people like in Philly are seeing him go to the UPS store, like in mailing the sweatshirts. I love that. So, Can we just say that he's selling them out of the back of his car? Pretty much. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I mean, I like, I respect it's the also, grind. <laughs> it's also maybe a little concerning after a win, a playoff win, like, or like a day off that he's just, he's filling orders on a day off. I don't know. No, I, I respect, I respect the hell out of that. You got to make money. He's a, what's his contract? How much does B Ball Paul get paid? He's making like three, three. No, it's it's like three years, four million. That's not that much. Total, total. <laughs> yeah, it, it, not that much when James Harden's your teammate and he's taking you out to strip clubs every night. That money goes fast. Yeah, that's true. B ball Paul, like if if B ball Paul probably wishes he could tweet right now, like that feeling when your when your two hundred million dollar teammate keeps making you drop <laughs> drop racks at the strip club yeah. on a Wednesday. James Harden's like, I'll cover half the room in money. B ball Paul, you cover the other half, and he's like, uh. One's okay. <laughs> um, all right. Next game, Hank, your Celtics, that's, that series is over. Yeah, I, so I was officially, obviously, you know, beforehand, I was talking to focus on the Hawks, focus on the Hawks. Tonight, I was really just starting to do some uh, thinking, and the only question really is, is there any chance the Heat win? And if they do win, does that mean we play the Heat? No. I don't think they reseed. They don't reseed. Only okay. They don't so that was the question. That question's answered. In that case, <laughs> you could have just googled, googled it. No, well, no. I saved for the show. Save for the show. I'm. I'm okay. I was walking, walking you through my my thoughts. And now, okay. so I'm just ready to destroy Philly. They're b-ball Paul. I can't wait for you. <laughs> wait, to, like, wait, wait. He's not going to play. He's going to score zero points. So they're do probably going to win in a don't sweep do or five. Our don't best friend this. Blake Griffin, who actually you should be rooting for, is going to play the same minutes as B-Ball Paul and absolutely fuck him up. All right, and then so, what are you going to do? All right, so don't that, do this. Hank. That's that's a compelling point that Hank just made. Like we're if if we're going to be B-Ball Paul guys, we we have no. to be prepared for the fact that he's going to be going one on one against our guy Blake. Fair, but I've I've thought about this. I, this is sick that like it popped in my head while I was just I don't even know what I was doing. I was, thinking I was driving somewhere and it popped in my head and I was like, how do we get around this Blake Griffin issue? Because we I like Blake Griffin more than I like Hank. Um, so like, how do we how do we figure this out? Uh, Sounds like so. You know. Well, here's here's where I've come to a conclusion. I think we got to root against Hank, but then if the Celtics win the title. We just flip it and we're like, we're so happy for our friend Blake. We always were rooting for him. Yeah, well, I'm rooting for Josh Harris. He's I don't really right care now. about the 76ers, but um, <laughs> I can't. I don't think I can root against Blake. If Blake's getting no, you can't. If he's getting over, what, what's the cutoff? I have to have like a minutes limit because if he's playing any sort of significant minutes whatsoever, I can't root against him. But if he's playing like five minutes a game, then I can. Then I can absolutely you know what, root against the Celtics. 
you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to root for Blake and I'm going to root for B-Ball Paul. Because I, I watched the, the whole Sixers game last night. I became in- B-Ball Paul tracker on online. I did not care if the Sixers won or lost. I do not care at all about the Philadelphia 76ers. I only care about B-Ball Paul. That's the same as Blake Griffin. Like, I'm just going to be a Blake Griffin stand. We should Here's do a question, a, Big Hat. Question, question, question. Wait, question. We should. I'm trying to make money for you, Hank. We should do a B-Ball Paul and Blake Griffin combined total points over. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say like a That's T-shirt actually where it's like idea. it's like Godzilla versus uh, <laughs> T-Rex or what is it? Godzilla. Kong. Uh, yeah, King Kong versus Godzilla. Yeah. It's B-Ball Paul Blake Griffin. Yeah. The battle for the East. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, the, no, we'll, the, we'll, we'll the definitely ki- make those shirts. Yes, the, that would fucking rock. The Killer Bees. Yeah. Yeah, they're just like on the – yeah, it's like both of them are just so big. They're on the East Coast, and they're just – they're basically like trying to dunk over each other. We have yeah. two hoops, so they're both trying to dunk at the same <laughs> yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, uh, merch right now. Question, big cat. <laughs> Game seven, TD Garden. Joel Embiid's fouls out. Robert Williams fouls out. Al Horford fouls out. Yeah, I'm rooting for Blake. I'm rooting for Blake in that. That's a no brainer. That's a All no right. brainer. Just one. If minute. Blake plays, I'm rooting for him. And if he does well, that means so, that's fine. I, I look. I got no. I got no hate, Hank. I. I think the Celtics is the best team in the playoffs right now. Like I, f- dude, Derek White is like, Derek White is really good. So is Brogdon. Brog- Brogdon's and Robert Williams is playing like he's healthy. Like he was playing healthy, active. It's always scary with him because it's like you really when you see him play healthy, it's so exciting, and you're like, if he's healthy, we will win the championship. But he's like, he's just so inconsistent, and he gets you know he's 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 a little fragile, so it's worrisome. But if he stays healthy, good things are coming. And I'm I I'm staying consistent with my Sixers Celtics. I just want maximum pain, no matter what, and it's most likely going to happen to Max because I just want the show. I want want the show to have maximum amount of pain. I want like three zero to a reverse sweep. I want like a game seven with a controversial ending. I want as mu- as much pain. I don't care who gives me the pain. I want to I want to I want to drink. I want to drink your milkshake pain. I've also thought about I spent, you know, some significant time tonight thinking again, like I've moved on from this series. I'm thinking about the Sixers. I'm ready to talk about the bet and I've I've come to my uh my terms. Okay. So this is six this is you versus Max, Sixers, Celtics. What are your terms? Full beard, no mustache. Okay, because we PFT we were debating uh earlier in the show or earlier in the day. By the way, we did FAQs back in the studio because PFT we didn't want him have them have to do like a two hour zoom tonight. Um, so we were debating whether they get their mustache. I was saying they should get just this. So I was, they get to keep just this. We were, we were, Max wants the mustache. And I think Max would probably no, be decent with the mustache. You don't hey, understand hey, how hey. bad my chins are going to look. Hey, like, this has you, like six like, chins. Like the fact that there. you think that this is going to be worse for you. But the is mustache disgusting. will distract that. I think that's my I point. Think what we should do. You know how it is. Big cat. I, I think it's shut up. It's going to be, <laughs> I think the soul patch is the right move. Hank and I were actually talking about the soul patch the other night. Yeah, it's going to be soul right patch here. summer. I think I think soul patches are making a huge comeback. I think one of you guys should lead the charge on that. Shave everything but that little patch right below your lower lip. Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. But yeah, no. I, the but, conclusion I came to is no mustache. It should be soul patch. Okay. I'm Not fine to with mention that whatever. I think it actually should. We should. What? We could talk about it when it when we actually get here. But it should be like an escalator agreement like if if one team gets swept you have to shave your face for three months <laughs> eyebrows like included. that should that should no, absolutely no, be part no, of it no that's bullshit that's bullshit yes. no no, no we're, we're, not doing that. we're not we're not for a month we're if not we're doing four no, months if, four one yeah, three four months, months. No, if, no, no, if no, you get months, if we'll you talk get about the, it we'll talk about it if you get the basketball <laughs> like I'm, i gotta i gotta be able to talk to chicks in chicago no that's facts yeah like i'm down for a sweep clause and we're definitely the favors there but also like i can't like that's bullshit. Worst case like, scenario. That obviously, it's more likely. Summertime shy and Hank's got no beard. Oh no, nah. nah. If you get swept, you you need. <laughs> I'm the down for room. a sweep clause, so we can figure it no, out. No, I am not down for a sweep clause. You scared? Maybe a tattoo. Yes. A tattoo for the sweep. Full bald head. Oh, just, no. just pick everything. See, like this is bullshit. The, like the, right, this we'll, is more things we'll figure, that are going against as me. As an impartial bystander, Max is coming off scared. Yeah, he is. He's coming off. Yeah, why would real not? Scared. Why wouldn't I? Have the best best you got to feel a little uncomfortable. Cel- Celtics and Sixers, wh- like, wh- where, where where would I have confidence? The, the, what um, do you mean the last game of the year? Joel Embiid had, like, 60 points, won the MVP. It was sick, right? 
Oh, I hate All right, we'll, we'll we'll table it till it uh, is official, and then we'll we'll get the whole thing. The, either way, the Celtics, I, I mean, are so much better than the Hawks. Derek White is like I think he probably suffers a little from being on a team with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum in terms of uh, the pub, like the general public realizing how good he's playing. He's playing out of his mind. He's he's he had MVP chance tonight. Yeah, it was crazy. Their defense is really good. I mean, they just gotta he stay healthy. Do, they, mean, they just gotta stay healthy. It's it, it, we're in we're in Celtics and Bruins are like just stay fucking healthy. Trey Young, I there was a few possessions where he just basically spent the entire shot clock trying to get the correct pick and roll, and the Celtics were just switching perfectly or pre switch like they were just doing everything, and Trey Young was in a blunder. He didn't know what to do. So you know they that's have, gonna be they, next they, next next week. Oh, James Harden. Just so you know, the Celtics won by 13 tonight and the Sixers won by 12 last night. And we're and we're crowning the Celtics as like the fucking champions of the well, world. Well, not all right. wins are created equal, Max. Yeah, I mean, I, but like, let's let's call a spade a spade here. I mean, OK, so if you're that confident, right, so then do why don't you agree? No, the no, no. I'm just I, I'm, I just <laughs> want to <laughs> acknowledge what's going on in this show. This is this. Yeah, no, this is what scared. Max does. Max Max gets scared and then he, he retreats into his little hole. And then and then he, he thinks to himself, oh, fuck, they got me good. They got me down in my hole so bad right now. And then he lashes <laughs> out up. and he makes no sense when he lashes up. He's like, I just got to show some aggression to prove that I'm not retreating my cubby right now. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, you gotta, he just goes and it goes home and just looks in his mirror. And he's like, don't let him do that to you again. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're fucking Philly tough. And then he's like, I'll, um, I'll show them. I'll show them. And then he's like. You guys are pussies. And he walks no, I mean, home. He's like, yeah, that was, you got that. We're just me, doing like the Sixers are playing ass. the Nets. The, like the Hawks fucking suck. The Sixers beat the Hawks uh, the Friday before the playoffs started without their top six guys. Like let's not <laughs> talk about how good the Celtics looks against, against the fucking Hawks Okay, right so now. make the bet. <laughs> I can't wait for this series. Uh, this is going to be yeah, so awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, uh, Knicks, Cavs. Cavs whomped. Whomped the Knicks. First time the Cavs won a playoff game without LeBron James since 1998. Who was the leading scorer for the Cavs in that game? Mark Price. Price. Sean Kemp. Wow. Wow. R.I.P. Yeah. 1998, Sean Kemp was the uh, leading scorer in that game. That game also had on the bench uh, Fred Hoiberg on the Pacers and uh, – Scott Brooks on the Cavs, so future coaches, a lot of legends in that I, game. So Drunas was in that game. I completely memory hold Sean Kemp on the Cavs. Had no idea that. And also, I do know that Sean Kemp is not dead, but he did get it. They they arrested Sean Kemp. Or the Rain yeah. Man's in prison right now. Also, I did, quick, I, quickly, it, Quinn Snyder was dressed like an absolute bum on the sidelines tonight. <laughs> I, they, like he, they cut COVID, him. I was like, just, who, "Who is standing up?" I was like, "Oh, that's the coach." My, like, he, he's realizing he made like the dumbest decision ever because he joined the Hawks mid-season when he probably could have had any job he wanted this off-season. So, but yeah, the um, the only reason I remember the Sean Kemp Cavs is I love those jerseys. You know the 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 weird jersey. They, like they were the late '90s. Like remember the Pistons did yeah, like it blue. So. Yeah, so many teams did just weird, funky ass jerseys that looked bad at, at in the time, but like have aged kind of well. Uh, Grizzlies were another one of those teams. Yep, love, Grizzlies love the Vancouver Grizzlies, big time, big time. Um, okay, so yeah, this game, I I have two two thoughts on this game. One is it was nice to see the Cavs make an adjustment where they were like, "Hey, Donovan Mitchell, you don't have to shoot every time." And Darius Garland went off instead, and so did Karis LeVert. And Donovan Mitchell actually had 13 assists. So it was like, "Hey, this is actually it might not be a good idea to have Donovan Mitchell shoot 35 times and Darius Garland not attempt a field goal in the fourth quarter." So that was a good adjustment. The second thing, Tom Thibodeau is the most stubborn man in the world because he had Julius Randle in this game down 20 with two minutes left. You would think the guy who had Derrick Rose as the one seed and they were up 12 on the Sixers with a minute left when Derrick Rose tore his ACL, which would have happened anyway. I'm not going to pretend that wouldn't have happened anyway. You'd think he would learn. And I think Julius Randle's okay, but it's like, how can he keep doing this? How does he keep getting away with this? It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, that Tibbs is who he is. He's yeah. not, he's not going to change ever. I, w I don't want him to change. Because Tibbs is—he's the perfect coach for like some team that 
is uh, like middling, like teetering on the edge of being a, a solid good team. If you get Tom Thibodeau on your on uh, coaching your team, then you know that you're going to be like you're going to be great going into the playoffs. And you're going to be like, yes, we can do this. We've got Tibbs, great defensive coach, and then it's not going to work, and then he's going to do it again somewhere else. He's just a very solid coach. Yeah, it, but it's it, he's a very very solid coach. But the the playing of players late in blowouts, and also I mean he he runs the. He runs every player in the ground, but it was just nuts. Like Julius Randle, I think he he took a very hard fall off a block, uh, off an attempted block on a breakaway, and there was a moment where it's like he came down so hard on his tailbone, he's gonna be out for the rest of the, the uh, playoffs. They were down twenty. It it was two minutes left. It was like even the announcers, Reggie Miller, was like, "This is insane that he's doing this." It would, I've lived it. It would be in, if you're a Knicks fan, you have every right to be upset and be like, "Dude." If you can't come back in the game, just fucking put your best players on the bench. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, all right. Last one. Um, the Suns are still alive. I might have prematurely texted Rosillo, um when it looked like the Clippers were going to, like in the second quarter, uh, the Clippers looked like they were cruising. I just texted him, do the Suns still have COVID? Uh, that was a mistake. But yeah, the Suns, what we thought the Suns were, show, they showed up with like two minutes left in the second quarter and then the entire second half. Yeah, this was this was a, uh, a legacy matchup between Chris Paul and Scott Foster. And all the stats were going out there. We may have passed around some fake stats about Scott Foster last year, but um, every, all the signs were pointing to like the, the fix is in. This is going to be Clippers game. And credit to credit to the Suns. I'm looking at the box score right now. Um, Westbrook was good. Westbrook was good. So Ka- Kawhi was great. Kawhi is literally, if, if they had a... If they did a trial trying to prosecute load management, the defense would call Kawhi Leonard as their lead witness or their 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 lead like testimony because he is he is the re- like what load management works for Kawhi Leonard. No, for Kawhi well, yeah, Leonard, he's also he, like a play. He was an he's a Finals MVP. Like he's just that guy. No, but right, he was but, doing he was doing load management before he was right. a Finals MVP. That's the whole thing. Like his lo- he doesn't get load management. Kawhi Leonard gets system updates. He just right. up, he upgrades the new operating system, and it works for him. Yeah, like load management. If you if you were trying to say what is load management, why would you do load management? You would just point to Kawhi and be like, this guy who barely plays the regular season, then when he plays in the playoffs, is incredible. Yeah, that's my and and I rest my case. Uh, yeah, what you say? Give us your thoughts because I know obviously you didn't watch, but your thoughts on the box score. Uh, just my thoughts on the box score. I was looking at it real quick, and uh, I see that. Um, Chris Paul actually didn't play that well tonight. So no, he's, I, re- he's, I retract he's that washed. Um, Deandre Ayton's back. It sounds like he's fully bought in and he's going to be committed to playing hard every single minute that he's in every single game. And he's all in on this Suns team and he's bought into Monty Williams and the system that they're trying to run in Phoenix. So De- Deandre Ayton is officially back. I expect that to continue well into the future. Uh, Kevin Durant sucked tonight. He had 25 points only. And then Devin Booker's a beast. Yeah. And uh and Tory Craig is also for some reason like he he was awesome in game 1 and he's awesome tonight again. As far as as far as Westbrook goes, we we did say like oh my god, he's by far the worst player on the court with about what 5 minutes left in game 1 when he was demanding the ball and his teammates just yeah. wouldn't pass the ball to him. Something happened to Westbrook. I think making maybe making a good defensive play at the end of a game, like, and also getting into a fight afterwards with a fan, like he he loves to feel. Well, that hated. was at halftime. Oh, that was at halftime. <laughs> yes, that's the best. You part. can't it be was doing. You can't be doing that. Also, Westbrook, so, <laughs> you're you're a good looking guy. You're in pretty good shape. I don't think you need to be going around with your shirt like surgically taped to your nipples at all point, right? Like we don't we don't have to. You don't have to be doing Ezekiel Elliott everywhere you go. I think he was. I think he was pulling his jersey back on coming out of the locker room. I guess apparently that was a COVID cut through. So when there weren't fans, it's like twenty seconds to go from the visiting locker room to the court. Windhorse had the whole breakdown, and if you go the long way, it's like two minutes. So players still use the COVID. Uh, you know, when there were no fans in the entire building, they use the COVID cut through. But now they're fans, and those fans will probably say, "Hey, Westbrick." And then you'll lose your mind and yell in front of a little kid. Yeah, it was it was a very very funny video, and that dude That's looked so that dude looked like he was ready to fight too. Oh, he's he, about it. He didn't he back down it. at all. 
Like yeah, I can recognize was- a guy that's been in a few scraps in his life. That guy, he, I'm not saying he's done time in prison, but he he knows how to handle himself at two thir- two thirty a.m. in Scottsdale. Yeah, and Westbrook. I mean, game one he was three for nineteen, but he was making a shitload of defensive plays, rebounds, and there is something to be said for a guy who's like, I'm just going to keep trying to force it and like make things happen. And he he hit those free throws at the end too. Like he just makes things happen, even if he's going to shoot three for nineteen. I'm sure he's going to be very consistent with this throughout the rest of this playoff series too. He's back. Yeah. Okay, yeah. officially by this by the stat sheet, Russ, Russell Westbrook officially back. I want to throw one last thing at you, PFT, and then we can talk a little hockey and then do hot seat, cool throne. Um, it popped in my head when I was watching Cavs Knicks tonight, and I tweeted it out, who are the top players? That you know, like if you know deep down they're retired, but if they were on the court, you wouldn't even blink. You'd be like, oh, yeah, no, they're still playing because I was watching the Cavs game and I was like, is Corver still out there? And then I looked it up and he retired like three years ago. He's an executive. And I, but right? if he, yeah, if he hit a three, I would have been like, oh, yeah, Corver, he's still playing. Uh, let's see. Uh, mellow, always mellow. Mellow. I have some good ones that people, people responded with too. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, Paul Pierce. Okay. I could see him playing. Um It's it's like it's 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 basically the guy who you didn't you don't really remember retiring because he never okay. really you know what I mean? Like someone someone threw out Rondo. Rondo, if Rondo was in a playoff series right now, you would not blink. No, not at all. You'd be like, Yeah, of course. Um the other ones, uh there was a couple of football ones. Torrey Smith was a good football one. If Torrey Smith was just catching a touchdown week one, and then someone aptly said I fully expect Adrian Peterson to be on the Colts next year, um, which makes so much sense. Like, I could see it in my head, him backing up Jonathan Taylor and just being like, fuck this. Why aren't I getting my carries? Yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of guys in the NFL that are like, oh, I thought that guy retired like five seasons ago. Yeah. Like, every yeah. every year, uh, Matt Moore, Yeah, when he would play, yeah. it's like, I thought that guy, that guy's Mercedes been retired Lewis since 2012. Still hanging around. Yeah, Mercedes Lewis. But it's the reverse, the guys who you – you think like Boris Diaw and Leandro Bar- Barbosa were two that were thrown out there, and I think those two. Like if you saw Bor- if you saw Boris Diaw's fat ass just running down the court in this Suns Clippers series on either team, mm-hmm. you wouldn't you you wouldn't be like, hey, what's going on here? Yeah, Big Z might be that way too. Yes, yeah, or uh, Verjao. Verjao definitely could be in a series. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, should we talk a little hockey? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, the Leafs fucking suck. I'm, you know what? The Leafs are on my list now. They they've made they've made the Chargers list. The one game the Sewers you, list. You, you know what? Did you watch the game? This is yeah. this is one of those classic events where I think I'm able to outsmart decades of incompetence. Like the same exact thing happened last year with the Seawards in the playoffs. I did the Leafs last year. Yeah. So you're just <laughs> No, I did I did too. I did the Leafs yeah, last year too. Right. Um I think that I'm I'm like one year ahead. I can predict when the market is going to shift entirely. I can time the market. And uh this is just a good reminder to me that we can't. The market times us. We don't time the market. Yeah, I feel similar about what happened with the Oilers on uh late Monday night into Tuesday cuz they were up 3-1, then they were up 3-2 with like 20 seconds left. They lose in overtime. The place was rocking. And they scored. They got a fake goal in overtime. Like, it seemed like it was over for a second. They got called back. I don't know if you saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. The whole thing. It's just like, I I can't do this with the Oilers. They they have to win game two. I'm trying to think. I mean, the Bruins look incredible. Um, We did Islanders Minute with memes before FAQs. He's talked himself into them not being... They're they're okay. They're fine. Um, but playoff hockey's back. It's it's awesome to watch. Like it's Hank and I were talking. Like this is the best one of the best times of year because you just hockey is just so fucking intense and there's game after game after game. It is great. I, you do get a little bit of FOMO when your team's not in playoff hockey, but also it, there's something magical about overtime playoff hockey when you don't have a dog in the fight. When it's somebody else that's living and dying with every single pass, every single turnover, every single uh, like close offsides, it, that sucks. If you it, overtime hockey it is the absolute best if your team's not in it, and overtime or in regular playoff hockey, 
is the worst if your team isn't actively in it. Now, I still like it. I still watch it. But every time I'm watching, like if it's if it's the uh, Oilers Kings playing, I'm just thinking to myself, man, this would be so cool if the Capitals were involved somehow. Yeah, big time, big time. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a great first two nights of playoff hockey because we had two overtime games on Monday. Hank, how's your overtime? Hank bet every over every game to go into overtime basketball and hockey. Yeah, a little. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll, we'll give the hot tip out to the people, too. I'm going to do this every single night of the first round until both first rounds are over. Well, and here's where I fucked up. I applied it to basketball and hockey, but in basketball, they don't have an offering of, like, t- the game to go in overtime. I did fourth quarter draw, but that just oh, means, that means that the fourth both quarter. teams just have to score the same amount of points in the fourth <laughs> quarter. <laughs> so... Thankfully, Hank. thankfully, there was no overtime in basketball because that would have been catastrophic. Uh, <laughs> and if there, if there, we can't figure it out in the sports book. I'm just going to do hockey, <laughs> but I will be doing it's round robin. So you just bet every game to go to overtime round robin. So if two games go to overtime, that's a big winner. Now that's, um, that's the thinking. You guys, I'm I'm not a numbers guy, Hank. I know you're uh, you've become a numbers guy recently. Maybe you can help me with this math here. How many minutes were played in the Kings Oilers game? Because there's there's 60, 60 minutes in the first three periods, and then how many minutes in overtime? It's like four minutes. No, there were like there yeah, were four so. minutes this overtime. So we'll we'll just say sixty five minutes were played. Uh, how many minutes do you think Connor McDavid was on the ice? <sighs> well, twenty eight. Connor McDavid was on the ice for twenty five minutes. Disgusting. Pathetic. Disgusting. Fraud. Disgusting. A lot of people are saying fraud. Uh, Connor McDavid is playing the same amount of minutes as I'm going to just find. B-Ball Paul, probably. Yeah, B-Ball Paul, maybe a little less. I didn't want to throw him under the bus there. Um, Danny Green, who is part of that list of guys that you can't believe are still playing. Or Obi Toppin for the oh, Knicks. Uh, Jeff Green, I assumed, has retired every offseason for no, the last five playing. years. But he's playing. He's, he's on the Nuggets, right? Yes. My Nuggets. Yes. Yeah, let's go. Jeff Green yes. Jeff Green will he's be playing in the NBA. He's young, too. He, yes. Like, he's, he's never – he's always been sneaky young. He'll be playing until he's 65. I love the sneaky young guys. We were, I can't remember who I was talking about today because, uh, oh, Allen Robinson got traded to the Steelers or will get traded to the Steelers. And uh, – the f- I, we've talked about this on the show before, but Brandon Cooks being 29 still is crazy because he's been on like a million teams. Yeah, no, but yeah, the old, sneaky young guys old. they sneak up on you. Um, okay, should we do hot seat cool throne? It is brought to you by us at the Barstool Sportsbook. Today's show is brought to you by the Barstool Sportsbook, the one and only sportsbook a show and Barstool Sports. Barstool Sportsbook is made for you, the loyal fans and listeners. The only place to find exclusive picks and parlays from me, El Prez, and the rest of the PMT crew. Follow or fade us. It's up to you. Now offering a $1,000 bonus for new players. If your first bet loses, get up to $1,000 in bonus cash. So download and create an account today. Use code TAKE to unlock your $1,000 bonus. The Barstool Sportsbook lets you bet however you like with daily odds boosts, live in-game wagering, move the line and teaser bets, and parlay plus for bigger payouts. I casino is also available in select states with table games and slots. Hank, will you be tweeting out your overtime round robin every night? Yeah, unfortunately, you can't do a shareable bet slip, but on so you're going to have to do that yourselves. But on Friday and on Sunday, the Red Sox, Celtics, and Bruins all play. We'll have a nice boosted Boston parlay for the people. I like that. Can use can use that logo that's got all four of the mascots looking really really tough in front of the Sitco <laughs> sign. I fucking yeah. love that one. <laughs> the town. Yeah, you got to get this Barstool Sportsbook, download and create an account today, and be sure to use code TAKE to unlock your $1,000 bonus. That's Barstool Sportsbook, code TAKE. Terms apply, must be 21 plus. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, Hank, hot seat, cool throne. Uh, my hot seat is Patrick Reed's wife. All okay. I- use golf facts? Use golf facts, yeah. So she, she, it was always kind of known that she was use golf facts, just a burner account, uh, always tweeting pro Patrick Reed stuff. We talked about her a bunch on the show, but it was never confirmed. A guy that works for No Lang Up Tron tweeted uh, a picture saying he was sent a picture of Patrick Reed at a game, made a joke about how 
because Patrick Reed and his wife went to Fenway. The PGA Tour gave them tickets. This was like six years ago. PGA Tour gave them tickets. Patrick Reed and his wife complained about the free tickets they got and said they had to upgrade themselves and were like bitching at the PGA Tour. And so the No Laying Up guy made a joke in reference to that saying, Use Golf Facts didn't attend due to the quality of the seats. And she replied from the Use Golf Facts account a picture of where her seats were with her sitting with them, like Dustin Johnson, Patrick Reed, and the guy. So confirmed. Confirmed. Justine, right? Yep. My favorite part about wow. about the two of them is is she's his caddy sometimes because he alienates caddies so quickly that she has to fill in. For, he doesn't have any friends. Poor guy. I mean, the twi- the Twitter account is so 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 funny. Just the it's couple of it's, it's probably the last i don't know if burners i don't know if they're going to be a thing forever i guess people you know are always doing them but it's one of the last great one of the last great burners it really is it is like it's a hall of fame first ballot hall of fame burner because she got exposed years ago and keeps using it yeah yeah it's awesome i love it <laughs> and everyone knows that burner what did you say you may- PFC made a burner, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I I had a burner. Yeah, burners are awesome. Burner life is the shit. I was just replying to tweets left and right. Nobody knew it was me. Just getting all these takes off that are too hot for podcasts. Yeah. I had a burner person, Youngstown Bob. It is fun to just pop on and just, like, stir some shit up and then just walk away. I get it what Kevin Durant does. Uh, All right, your cool throne. Uh, My cool throne, I guess it's... AI, I probably should have put this on the hot seat, but I, I watched the 60 Minutes AI thing and I'm fully convinced I figured I should just get it on record that probably within like a month, AI is going to build robots, take over the world, and we're all going to die. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not to be like overly dramatic or anything, but I think AI, like, I think it's just a matter of time and it's been real. Well, yeah. What did I say? The- like, like um, three months ago. Yeah, no. Oh, I'm, Billy I'm, called no, this. I'm, Billy was yeah. the first person to predict that AI was going to take over technology and then dominate the world. Credit must credit no, Billy no, hot takes. We should all be Luddites. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had that same thought when I saw iRobot, but I didn't say it out loud, so Billy gets credit. Well, you remember you remember the old uh Yeah, but those thought- are movies and now it's like that's it's like actually happening. I mean all movies end up being true. Same Prev Ryan. <laughs> hmm Good point. That happened. JFK. Yep. Exactly. Uh, gone in sixty. Gone or uh, gone in sixty seconds. Fast five. With Fast Cage. five. Yeah, all these things happen. Uh, it was. Um, remember that thought experiment that we talked about in this show, Rocco's Basilisk, which is that uh, at some point AI is going to take over human civilization, and it'll become so smart that it'll be able to go back in time and figure out which human beings helped AI get developed and which ones were anti-AI and then I'm it'll go it. back in time AI. and punish you. Yeah. So for the record, I fuck, I, I for one welcome our new software overlords. I have a poster of AI in, in, in my uh, bedroom. Yeah. It, Always looked up to AI. When I, was, when I was 13, it was play basketball, go outside, come inside, jack off to AI, go outside, <laughs> eat dinner. That's what boys do. That's, that's what hate, boys do. <laughs> I hate AI, so if I look bad on the internet, it's because they went back in time and made me look stupid. Oh, man. That, that's that's what AI did. Wow, this thing's because really good. AI. <laughs> Damn. This, this is actually, we recorded this 20 years ago. Yeah. AI is just producing the podcast. So my, my theory is that, that Elon Musk, he's got the Neuralink implant in his brain right now, so he's part AI. I think that so many people distrust Elon Musk that he's purposely going on the record warning people about AI. So people be like, oh, if Elon cares about it, it's probably not that big of a problem. And then making AI actually exist because so many people are like, fuck Elon. Jake, remind us to do a takey for two online person of the year because Elon's definitely in the running. He he said in an interview he did in the past, he's doing interviews everywhere, but he said that something about uh, if on the he show. saw what? Come on the show. Mm-hmm. Come on Open the show, Elon. Uh, he, yeah, yes, absolutely. We'll interview Elon Musk. He and we'll just basically be like, "Why aren't you on a sports team, dude? Why'd you uh, take away my check mark?" Yeah, well, I'm gonna get to that. I don't got, I don't got one. Uh, he, he said that aliens don't exist because he would be the one person who would know. And if he, if he knew that aliens existed, he would tweet out the proof because it would get so many likes. Oh, <laughs> that's probably how you know that Elon. You're a billionaire. Doesn't know. 
Yeah. He, but, I mean, he should. He really needs some friends, man. Like some actual, so some friends that that are real solid dudes that'll bust his balls. And give him the Packers. Give him. Give him. So yeah, you do need a sports team. Be cool, Eli. Just or Elon. Just play. It. It's fucking annoying seeing him. Yeah. Seeing him do this when he could be spending his money on all the fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um. All right. Your hot seat. PFT. Uh, my hot seat is popcorn. But yes. popcorn on the hot seat. I figured somebody was going to talk about this, so uh, took over the internet. This is also like a maybe just log off moment. Uh, but yesterday, the internet was filled with debate on uh, Blue Jays pitcher Anthony Bass. So his wife took a flight on United Airlines and had a, a two-year-old and a five-year-old. And they were served popcorn on the flight. And then Anthony Bass tweeted at the airline complaining because the flight attendant made his uh, 25 week. This is my big problem with it. How pregnant was his wife? 20 say it in months. Okay. okay. So I have, I, I I've already said this take. So if I'm going to get crucified, I'll get crucified. I, I, I live with a pregnant woman. Pregnancy is very difficult for women. It's crazy. I'm a pussy. I would never be able to do it. 22 weeks is not that pregnant. Okay. It's pregnant. It's about like four and a half, five months. So there's a there's a belly, but it's not like when you see an eight month pregnant woman, eight you know, eight month pregnant woman, it's like they are going through hell right. to like even get around. Right. So my my biggest problem with this was that he said twenty two weeks and then I had to sit down and break down how pregnant that was in my brain by doing math. That's what pissed me off. Just say months. If if you had said months, I would have been like, okay, that's – you're probably show. He did that on purpose though. I, I would have been like, you're probably showing a little bit, um, but you're also able to get around okay. And there's a good chance that the flight attendant didn't even know that she was pregnant if she's only like – what? Now I'm confused four again. Four, four and a half months. Four and a half months Four and a half, pregnant. five months. So like, just be normal. Pregnant people, I'm begging you. Be, just talk to me in months. I don't yes. get weeks. Four and a half months. If he tweeted four and a half months, he would have. I mean, he already got roasted. Like the the guy. There's so many layers to how stupid he is. One is you're never going to win tweeting that. Two, you have a seven eleven ERA. You just open the floodgate. Like if you had a one nine ERA, you can tweet that and just dunk on people. Mm -hmm. He just got obliterated. And three, listen, everyone's got to parent their own kids. One of his kids is five years old. My son's about to be four. He would be picking up that popcorn if I told like you. The kid can pick up the popcorn yeah. if, if that's the deal. Yeah. and I do think the flight attendant was probably being a dick. So we that we, also is true. The other part of the equation we don't know what is, if he's, what is if he's the actual conversation that happened between the flight attendant and the wife. We're hearing this from Anthony Bass, but I don't know if the flight attendant was like yelling at his wife, like "Get on your hands and knees and pick that <laughs> shit up before you get off this fucking plane," or if she was just like. Hey, uh, can you pick up this popcorn that my child spilled? And the flight attendant was like, "No, I can't." And you pick it up. Like, it's, who knows where the truth is? It's probably somewhere in the middle. But for him to go on this rampage and then to end it by saying, "Like, and I'm dealing with I'm dealing with this flight attendant privately with United Airlines," implying that you're going to get this person fired, you're never going to win that battle on the internet because no. then then all of a sudden everybody's a flight attendant or people deputize themselves as speaking for this entire service industry, if they're like a waiter or a waitress and they're like, I see how you're talking to this flight attendant. Let me tell you, it's not that easy. And so of course, everyone's just going to jump on you and just lay into you for this take. Um, but the, it's been a while since we had a, a good old fashioned, remember that guy bean dad, this felt a lot like bean dad, uh, bean yeah, dad guy yesterday came on his cats, did not come on his cats. He was never near his cats with come, uh, but it was a good, it was a good, like, innocent enough internet scrap where people were just weighing in and getting their jokes off. It was kind of nice. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It, it just – it shocks me that he – when he sent that tweet being like, this will go well. Well, he, <laughs> he – I think he sent it just being like trying to trying to tell on the flight attendant and get the flight attendant fired. Which yeah, right. is a, There's no other reason to do it. Or maybe he was just saying, like, United, this is bad, hoping that he was going to get, like, I don't know, a couple free tickets. Uh, but dude, you you play professional baseball. You fly for free all the yeah. time. I don't think that you need free tickets. Um, so either way, he doesn't look good. 
Yeah. The um. Yeah. It's uh. I'm actually in a holding pattern right now to skull fuck. I'm gonna have the skull fuck of my lifetime with uh, Air France if they don't fix what's happening with SVP. So people probably listen to SVP's podcast. When if you remember when he was on with us the Masters Sunday from the airport and he got a call and he's like, I got something I got to deal with. I'll deal with it after his house is burning down. So, uh, really like sad, like it sucks really bad for him. He's trying to figure everything out. Air France wasn't going to refund a ticket, a ticket with he and his wife going to Paris this weekend. Cause his house burned down mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah, sorry, nothing we can do. So I'm, I told him if he wants me, I will not sleep until I skull fuck Air France. This is for forever. This is the worst thing Air France has ever done. Ever, ever. This would be a legacy game for me, though, if he calls on me. Yeah. Wait, what is <laughs> skull fucking in French? Oh, uh, someone looked that look up. Looked that up, Jake. Can Find you look that, that up? Me. You can cuss in French. I give you permission. Menage yeah. skull. Menage skull. I kind of like that. Uh, and then what's your cool throne? My cool throne is Dan Snyder. Um, so. Uh, a report has surfaced, and we talked about it a little bit on Monday's show, um, about a mysterious $7 billion bid that's coming in. And I told you guys it's a bullshit bid. The guy has – he has no money. He's not a rich guy. He tried to buy the Timberwolves, and the NBA laughed at him and said, okay, whatever. Um, so there was a report that came out today, and uh, I, I, th- this popped up on my phone, and I had, to, I had to almost laugh and just tip my hat to Dan Snyder for being such – such an asshole to fathom to to even even reach levels that I had never even really considered truly uh the seven billion dollars is allegedly being funneled to Davis, the guy that went to Duke and now he's a a, a tech investor. The seven billion dollars has allegedly been funneled from Saudi Arabia. Ooh. And it's it's Mohammed bin Salman that's trying so he has it that's trying to buy an NFL team getting money into the United States through an intermediary. And I just have to tip my hat, my hat to Dan Snyder for like, if this son of a bitch could sell the team to quite literally the one person in the entire world (laughs) that would make me more upset than if it was Dan Snyder owning this team. And that's just levels of, it feels personal at that, at this point between me and Dan and I still have every reason to believe that it's going to be jo- him and it was Josh Harris and then the uh, the other guy Mitchell Rails were sitting next to each other at the Sixers game courtside last night. So I'm pretty sure that means that their bid's doing well. They're happy with each other. Um, but if it's if it gets sold to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, I just gotta. I think I have no Unreal. choice but then to become. I gotta switch over. Sorry, the Emir of Qatar. I'm I'm a Saudi guy. I'm a Saudi guy for life. I've already got I've got the whole get up me and Donnie bought when we were overseas. I think I just have to become unapologetically a live tour guy uh, and whatever F1 crew that he sponsors and then just full blooded commanders fan and just just accept the fact that I've been beaten. I've been I will have fully been conquered by Dan Snyder at that point. So I hope it doesn't come to it, but it was it was one of those moments where I I was just I was laughing. I was like, "Well, well done, you son of a bitch." I mean, we hope it doesn't happen, but it would be you would have fun the heel turn. Yeah. And just defending him and just going like all in on it. Yeah, be a, it would be fun. A full-time MBS stand. I can do it. I've You got to get paid though. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah. I well, my payment would be just uh remaining alive. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. It would that's just be him not sending his his bone saw guys at me. Listen, Jamal Khashoggi, oh. he was actually a political activist in Saudi Arabia <laughs> before he moved to the United States. That's what they're not telling you in the mainstream. I'm just practicing. I'm getting my spiel ready. Yeah, that is that is wild. I mean, he probably will get a little more money out of Josh Harris. He's. I, I think I, I might have said this before, but Khashoggi's the only guy in the world that probably hates the Washington Post more than Dan Snyder. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, all right, my uh, hot seat is our guy Stephen Adams. So they did a anonymous poll. Uh, the athletic did it uh, of NBA players, and they did like a bunch of different things. Like most uh, overrated player, Trey Young won that, uh, which that's gotta hurt so bad to just have that be like every all my peers think I'm overrated. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a fucked it, up category. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, there was a category: Who in the league would you least like to fight? Stephen Adams was two. James Johnson was one. Really? 
James Johnson, which I didn't realize, is a black belt in karate and owns a 20-0 and 0 record in kickboxing matches. So a fair one, yeah. but still... Steven Adams felt like that that felt like his his title to lose. Yeah, that category was was basically made for him. I right. I'm I'm shocked that I didn't know about James Johnson. I would have said maybe the Celtics coach. He's got he's got the experience getting choked out. He, yeah, he likes to get choked out. But yeah, the um yeah, the most overrated player. That's the good thing for Trey Young is uh he had fourteen point eight percent of the votes and other one with thirty one percent of the votes. Oh yeah, so, so he didn't even win that. Yeah, other one. Um, and then my cool throne is uh, me because I'm an unverified bad boy now. I lost my check mark, which at first I thought Elon was actually being a man of his word and taking away check marks. Turns out it is a new rule that if you change your name, so I changed my name to B-Ball Paul Tracker, they take away your check mark. So I'm I'm out in the wilderness. I got to mm-hmm. figure out what to do. I might have to buy Twitter. I didn't realize Billy also bought Twitter. Yeah. So well, he bought. Oh no, yeah, I he didn't. Told he bought Twitter didn't. blue. Twitter blue. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Billy. By the time this is being recorded, my blue check mark will be gone. Why do you say that? Because he's changing it right now. <laughs> I can hear the. I can hear the keyboard. Yeah, he's clicking it right now. But I mean, everyone's is going to be gone on the twentieth, right? Yeah, four twenty is the last time. Mine won't be because I pay for Twitter because blue. This motherfucker paid it. for Twitter. I yeah. might end up paying for Blue. it, but I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live as an unverified yeah. guy. It's been I don't know. I've been probably eight years since I've been unverified. So yeah, is this fun? Is this even the real big cat talking to us right now? Yeah, we who who knows? I've I've not decided. I don't think I'm gonna buy it, but the long yes, videos, hundred percent. Why? Why would I? Why hey. would I ever? Why would you say that, Hank? Because you got it in the first place. I was. It was forced <laughs> upon me. We've had this conversation. Okay. I will say I tweeted a clip from Monday show and then I shared it from the part of my take account over 220. So it's useful. Very cool. Oh, wait. So Very Jake, cool. I can just have you tweet out but, the long videos and then I'll just tweet your video. Yeah. But okay. I can, also, I can, I can do them all for you. I don't care. Who the fuck is watching a two minute and 30 <laughs> second video on Twitter? The part of my take clips, obviously. But those are way Besides too long. Those. Wait. So Besides, if you're not gonna, if you're not going to do it for the long videos, what would you do it for, Big Cat? Uh, I, if they tell me that, like, we got that email from the social team being like, it helps engagement. So I, I'm undecided. So we'll see. Somebody said that I was making a political statement when I said that I didn't plan to pay for Twitter blue. I didn't. Is that a political statement to say that you're not going to buy something? Oh, I, uh, I forgot. I guess it is. Everything's a political statement now because it's just triggered in my mind. Uh, DeMar Hamlin's clear to play football. And I said, you shout out everyone's prayers. They worked. And uh, that got a lot of people upset. And but it reminded me, Billy, what? How are you going to answer the fact that you thought he died? I never actually thought he died. Okay, all right, it was a bit. It was a bit. No, like if you okay. go back, it's like okay, I'll play the part. <laughs> like clone. I literally but, on the thing was like, okay, I'll play the part. Okay, you play the part, but the same guy. But also, like, how can he raise his hands above his head? <laughs> And did you see how fuzzy the camera was? And he's wearing goggles. Look, let's just see if he plays like the same Demar. <laughs> <laughs> what if he's better? What if he comes back better than ever? He's just... But uh, it, it like reminded me how much Twitter does suck now because I tweeted that and then people were like, isn't it crazy that we never found out what happened to him? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we did. We know what happened to him. Uh, Jake, your or no, Billy, your hot seat, cool. Uh, my hot seat is the whole Quinn Ewers Arch Manning quarterback battle at the University of Texas. Not only is it over, it really wasn't much of a battle at all. And in reality, in the UT quarterback competition, there was a big dark horse sleeper that no one saw coming in Malik Murphy. And uh, they had their uh, spring game over the weekend. And honestly, the most astounding guy was Malik Murphy. Uh, who I think has the best arm out of any of the quarterbacks on the team. Quinn Ewers did have an amazing day, 16 for 23, 195 yards, one touchdown just in a spring game. But he looked pretty crisp, um, but he was running with the ones. But this Malik Murphy guy just was throwing bombs out there. And if, you know, God forbid Quinn Ewers goes down with an injury, like they're in good hands with Malik Murphy. Uh, Great and, quarterback That's good game. for Arch Manning, by the way. Yeah, right. yeah. Arch, he should have started as a freshman. Yeah. That would have... Yeah, that would have been a lot. I mean, um, plus just watching Arch Manning in this setting, like he's only had 15 college uh, practices under his belt. And really, like, you know, he's got 
he's a high school senior. He has senioritis right now. He really like if he's a 17 year old kid playing with college players, and that's exactly what he looked like in the spring game. Honestly, Billy, great mobility, great decision making for what he was giving. Running with the threes with a terrible offensive line, um, but you know this kid's got so much pressure on him. But he, he's kind of doing well for it. He's got senioritis. I like that. I like that take. That Arch Manning, Billy, you have you have chronic senioritis, just yeah. long term. Also, he you're you're he a long haul have senioritis, a long haul no, no, senioritis. That, that's what I'm saying. Like he should be in his senior spring, like skipping class, like taking senior. But he's days. in college. But he's in co- No, he he's technically he graduated early and went to college right. early. But like right, he's in college. Right. He didn't get to experience the senioritis. He, right. he didn't get to go on his rum springer. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, I like sluggish. that, Billy. We're like, yeah, this is this is actually getting around the time of year where Billy's like, guys, if I had continued college and done like a master's degree, like I'd probably be drinking a lot right now, so I need a month off. I'd be playing football probably still <laughs> if I'd gone to a different school. Uh, uh, I, okay. I like I like Arch. I, I like the idea of him kind of like lurking because there's going to be some great sideline shots of oh, Arch yeah. Manning every time Quinn Ewers throws an interception. Um, by the way, Quinn Ewers needs to grow the mullet back. I understand you're trying to go for a different clean cut look. Quinn Ewers has a mullet. You played great yes. when you had a mullet. Bring that shit back. Facts. No. Nope. Your cool throne. Uh, my cool throne is uh, me because I put a lot of. I didn't know if I was going to get it done by the time this podcast was going to happen. But my 2023 QB draft class rankings will be out by the end of the day on Wednesday. Wait. Okay. We got to do it on the show. Okay. Let's do it on Friday's show. So so post the blog on Friday, and we'll do it on Thursday. Okay, perfect. This yeah. is, for anyone who doesn't know, Billy has, uh, what was it? What was last year? Who did you have? Yeah, it was a bracket, but who won it? Last year, it was Malik Willis. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then the year before, was was that Chad Kelly's year? Or is no, that... that was Sam Ellinger. Sam Ellinger's year, yeah, he, he won that. He was <laughs> Billy's number one ranked QB. I think he beat Trevor Lawrence in the finals. It was yes, a huge yes. upset. Yes. So you know, like you basically can follow along and be like, "Who's definitely not going to work out?" No, no. that's Willis the beauty. Of they, all, they all haven't panned out though. yet. We like, there's a lot more, you know, career left. <laughs> Billy, we, yeah. AR fifteen. Oh, AR fifteen. No, nope. look, wait, don't, don't. I take into Save account it. what the mainstream media does it, and, and you'll oh, see it. You'll see what it. a tease! Mm, yeah. I love it, Billy. I'm excited for Friday's show. All right, and Jake that is where he off. gets drafted. It's, it's you got to have a good guy with an AR-15, not a bad guy. Yes, with an AR-15. yes. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh no, that was Josh Dobbs who started for the, the playoff yeah. game, right? Yeah, not for yeah. us. Oh um, yeah, yeah. My hot seat is Brian Windhorst. Uh, he was doing a hit on first take on Monday morning from his hotel room in Phoenix. And he had to whisper during his hit because his hotel room neighbor was trying to sleep. It was at 6.30 local time. 6.30 a.m. That's just, that's just a great dude. To grind. Yeah. Dude, but yeah. Wendy, when they work Wendy to the bone. I'm, He's doing everything. When, you remember when Wendy would fall asleep on the job because he was working so hard? They just, he was, Dude. I think he did like 36 hours of television. Yeah, he, he is where we actually, well, this will be a tease, but I've been in contact with Wendy. He's going to come on the show for the NBA playoffs at some point. Very excited, but he, he's a dog. He's got that dog in him. Was, was there somebody in his room that was trying to sleep or it was no, his next was door neighbor? Next door neighbor. Like I feel That's, bad. I have my roommate right across the wall here. I'm not whispering. Like, what's his name? Blake. Yell it. You wait. What? Yeah. Blake. Your roommate's name is Blake, and you didn't tell us? Now you know. Is he cool? Yeah. You want him, should I <laughs> should him he be running? part of Blake of the Year? He's an AWL. I'm sure he's down. Jake, I feel like this is a fact you should have told us a long time ago. You live with a Blake? What's What does he keep in the fridge, Jake? Um, he eats healthy. Mm. Uh, not very healthier, or healthier or less healthy than you? Probably around the same, but he cooks a lot. I don't really cook. Does he meal okay. prep? Uh, yeah, he does meal prep. Does he lift? Yeah. Does he, okay. play team, does he bench? I don't know what he benches. I'll what teams him. does he root for? South Florida teams. 
Can we? Oh, that's good. Can yeah. we get maybe just a quick? You don't have to, you know, dox them or anything, but maybe just a quick one sheet uh, of all the stats that you could. We'll, we'll have him with the Blake committee and just try to figure out if he's uh, qualifies. Yeah, I'll get it for you and okay. uh, give it to the committee. Ask him if just ask him tomorrow morning if he wants to be part of Blake of the year, and if he's like, yeah, sure. That's a yeah. Then he's in. <laughs> yeah, but if he's, if he's like, too excited, if though, he's, he's too out. Excited, he's out. He's out. Or if he yeah. says no. Yeah. Uh, then I want to be more. Then he's definitely yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. I want to fuck this Blake. <laughs> if, he, if he says no, I'm going to fucking give this guy Blake of the year. I'm, I'm going to move into your fucking room, Jake, just so I can follow him around. Yeah. I'm going to watch him sleep. Yeah. All right. Um, your cool throne. My cool throne, the defending champion, Water Dogs Lacrosse Club. Please credit me and Billy. The schedule is here. Some of the oh. highlights. Defending champion, the Water Dogs, in a championship rematch against the Chaos in week one. There's a Jake, win. When, when's the opening weekend? First weekend of June. Thanks for Jake, asking, Hank. Is the June Chaos second, third, and fourth in Albany. Are the Chaos going to have a ring ceremony for their second place finish? <laughs> I don't know. The Chaos, <laughs> the Chaos are a team of Canadians, and what's really funny is they all run funny because they're all Canadians, and Canadians <laughs> all run funny because they all played like, hockey. So you yeah. see them trotting around. I, this is true hilarious. of all hockey players. They, like they're they're decent, but like they're not gonna be able to run with the dogs because yeah, they're, they're Canadians. Yeah. yeah, this is exactly why I wanted to do the show today, so I can I can hear things <laughs> like like Billy do anthropological analysis of, they have of how every muscle Canadian development runs. from skating from such a young age, and they don't run right. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. Have yeah, you ever seen start. hockey players Keep like going. play pickup basketball yeah. or even any other type of sport? It, they're the most lethal. Like it's. Like they're only good in skates at what they do, <laughs> and that is why it's so weird. For twenty minutes a game, yeah, yeah, and they don't even look Barely like athletes off the, the ice. Unlike Billy, a football yeah. player who's sick at basketball. <laughs> at least I run yeah. right. <laughs> That's a fact. Like, fact. Yeah, <laughs> good counterpoint. So the whole schedule should be released this week. But similar to like when Schefter teams up with like Jeff Darlington, you gotta credit me and Billy. If when you okay. see the schedule drop, so look online. Whose name first? Uh, I'll let Billy do it. No, no, Jake, Jake oh. can go first. But when it's when you're there's oh. citing, do Canadians run right? No, you can <laughs> cite me. Okay, okay, yeah. all yeah, right, that's good. That's important. Yeah. All right, I'm excited. We're Water Dogs. We're probably gonna suck. Probably have a championship hangover. No, we signed a lot of great uh, free agents the off season. Is that gonna mess yeah. up the chemistry though? No, no, because we, we need super to team. Guys. We're not a super team. That's the Redwoods. They got a lot of names, but they could just never, you know, get together and play as a team. And what week are we playing them, Jake? I think that's the week Redwoods. Week two. Week two. Yeah. So <laughs> loss. Also, rumor is that they're bringing back the beer garden for the regular season. So if you want to challenge Billy, come to PLL games. Love Billy, it. should we be concerned that the uh, that the guys that we signed the free agent? Guys, they're uh, they're just ring chasing right now. But you know, the, if those guys want to work with the team and if they put in a great off season, I think I think we're set for a dynasty. If they want to humble themselves, I mean, we. Why didn't they the ask winner? us for ring sizes? Did they ask you guys? Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think we just made it up. We ended the whip snakes. Dynasty. I did just make up. I, Rabel texted me and I for, he texted me during March Madness. So like everything was going on. They texted me a week later. He's like, hey, about this, and I was just like. Uh, PFT is a 12, I'm a 14. I, I think if you'd ask me, I'd just say regular. Yeah, I, was like, <laughs> I literally just made up those numbers. I don't know why. They could be nowhere near. I was like, if it's the wrong size, I'll just put it on a necklace. Fuck it. So, yeah, we're getting rings. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to go ahead. One PFT. last thing. I, I don't think anybody brought up Jalen Hurts. Max, you didn't bring up Jalen Hurts' new contract today. Broke the bank. I was holding a sweatshirt during the entire a uh, hot sequel throne hoping that somebody would say it yeah i mean i this is i, saw, I was wondering what you were doing when that you see together. these numbers i i think to myself like how come the eagles have the only good general manager in football I, to put together the cap numbers that that howie and i love howie because he's got the perfect name for philadelphians to either be really excited about or really fucking despise because you can say howie mm-hmm. like you're about to slit the guy's throat or howie yeah. like let's fucking go howie and uh, and he he knocked out of the park. It looks like a really 
really team friendly contract as far as the cap goes in the first four years. I don't understand how how it works. I don't I don't understand how it's like physically possible. It's like eight million for for the cap hit. Yeah, we need a capologist on this show. It's crazy. And also, I think Mahomes now is the seventh highest paid quarterback, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's how fast it goes. Josh Allen not not at the top anymore. Um, Russell Russell Wilson's like two, right? Yeah, it's like, and then oh no, I, Aaron Rodgers is two, list. and then I think Wilson yeah. might be three after that. So and, Joe Burrow is oh. stoked today. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna get paid. Um, okay. So we have a great interview with Michael Rubin that we taped last week, and then we'll finish with FAQs and the lottery ball. Uh, like I said, PFT was not in studio for that. It was only like 15 minutes. Um, and then, yeah, we'll we'll see everyone on Friday. Before we get to Michael Rubin, quick word from our friends at Pardon My Cheesesteak. It's delivery and pickup only restaurant brand bringing you craveable cheesesteaks and loaded fries. Pardon My Cheesesteak has been on fire. We're everywhere right now. We're in stadiums. We got carts. We have been on fire. And I think if you are someone who uh, has not tested it out or maybe you tested it right when it started, we started to perfect it. So we, we, we are very, very careful with which ghost kitchens we choose. We're making sure we give you the best cheese steaks out there. We're now live in all 50 states. Whoa, we're live in Alaska? Yep. Can you find out where you can get in Alaska? Anchorage. Hell yes. I just made that up. We're live in Alaska. We're live in Hawaii. We're across a 1,000 locations. I love the Chipotle uh, cheesesteak, delicious, fries, perfect, little little uh, brownie bites at the end, the perfect meal. Order now at PardonMyCheesesteak.com, also available on Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. So, thank you everyone who's been buying Pardon My Cheesesteak. We've been crushing it. We love making cheesesteaks for the people. So check it out again. Order at PardonMyCheesesteak.com, or it is on Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. Okay, here is Michael Rubin. Okay, we now welcome on recurring guest. He has been on before. It is Michael Rubin, CEO, founder of Fanatics. Used to be co-owner of the Sixers, no longer. Is that officially done? That is officially done. Okay, so let's start there. So first of all, thank you for coming back on. We love we love having you on, talking some business, talking some sports. Uh, do you think you were the curse because the minute you sold uh, your portion of the Sixers, Joel Embiid wins the MVP. It's facts. Like, I mean, I said the second I sold, I went out and said the Sixers are winning a championship this year. I fully believe that's happening. I think it was my sale of the ownership that motivated everybody to play that much harder, that much better. And I'm looking forward to helping everyone to hoist a trophy this year in Philadelphia. Wait, so that would, if they do win a title, would that, I know you're a Sixers fan, but... Would that hurt a little bit? It would have no, to hurt a little not bit. No, slightest. no, no. Listen, these guys are still my family. I mean, look, you, you know, I mean, Joel is like a brother to me. James is a brother to me. I mean, these guys, guys are people I'm really tight with. Josh Harris splits are a family to me. Like, no, these guys are absolute family. The only team that I really care about in the world, I'd say, is the Sixers. And then, let, 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 I mean, those are, that, that is my team. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. So you're still rooting for that, but I... Th- that would drive me nuts if they won the. No, mid- I'd be, I'd be so happy. Okay, and, and, and I gotta tell you something, it's so much more relieving and so much more um, peaceful to know that I can help in any way I want without seventeen people looking at me and accusing me of everything. In the world. Yeah, yeah. That's do, true. do you get a ring if if you guys win? I get a mental ring. I mean, I probably would get a ring. You but just make your own too. Yeah, I'll tell you something. There is nothing that would make me happier this year than for the Sixers to win a championship, and I think we can do it. I think you know. The team is really gelling together. The chemistry's there. It's exciting. Um, people are really locked in. Uh, and I got to tell you something. I talked to, you know, Joe, James, Doc, Josh, Blitz. I talk to these guys as much as I did when I, when you know, I owned, when I was the third largest on the team. So yeah. from my perspective, it just got too complicated with fanatics. You know, we're now, we have thousands of individual deals with athletes. You're not allowed to do that. We're taking bets, you know, on the Sixers. Um, we're... Um, you know, in business with agents, you're not allowed to do that. We have players that own part of the company in the NBA. We bought Mitchell Ness together with a bunch of players. So it was just too complicated. But, I mean, this is my team. Was yeah, that- was that the main reason why you decided to, to move on from the Sixers was because Fanatics was getting into sports gambling? And is there like a hard and fast rule in the NBA where if you're involved in, in owning a gambling company, you can't also own a team? Yeah, there were like 10 hard and fast rules that I think that didn't yeah. work for us anymore. So, <laughs> you know, the, the, the reality is when I um, – 
bought my stake in the Sixers in 2011, Fanatics was a small business. It was a, I think, a 250 million dollar business. The business this year is approaching, you know, it, you know, it, it's th that original business, just the merchandise business, which is one of our three businesses. That's more than six billion dollars today. Um, now we've launched uh, the collectibles business. We've launched the the, the online sports brand, iGaming business, and we're we have such a massive opportunity with Fanatics to build this into really the only you know global digital sports platform where a fan can do anything they want, um, you know, with us digitally, and it just it went from a benefit early on as kind of a business development benefit to it really became, if I'm being blunt, uh, it was getting in the, in the way of fanatic success. And so for me to be able to be locked in and focused on how do I create the best uh, experience for fans, and the best business with fanatics, well, at the same time being free to help the Sixers in any way I can. Yeah. I mean, that, that's winning. So uh, then now are you closing the door on sports ownership going forward? Because... That is like every rich guy's dream. Like we, we always talk about closed. It. You're closed. Closed. See that because, that's a red flag to us. Yeah, we yeah. we've said we had the long standing take that like people criticize Elon Musk for a lot of things. The only thing you can the, the the number one like red flag is that that guy has so much money he doesn't want to buy an NFL team. Like that's what rich guys should do. They yeah. should buy an NFL team because that's cool. That's what I would do. That's what PFT would do. That's what everyone in this room would do. So are you now? We're gonna put you in the weirdo pile. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I am weird, so that's fine. Um, and put, put me <laughs> you on that. You embrace pile. it, yeah. 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 Look, here's the reality. I have the most exciting. I'm the luckiest person on the planet. I get to wake up every day, go to bed every night, work 18 hours a day, figuring out how can we keep developing fanatics. And we are in the first, like we are in the first quarter of this game, and we, we're barely getting started. We have so much to do to improve in everything that we do. And by the way, we'll enter new businesses over time. So for me. That's intoxicating to me. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. And I think I learned a ton and I think added a lot of value to the Sixers. But, you know, for me, the opportunity to build Fanatics into one of the most valuable companies in the world, you know, I, I think I don't want anything to get in the way of that. And sports ownership would be in the way of that. At the same time, we also, you know, let's keep this real. Like, if you want to have a real talk, why do rich guys want to own sports teams? Because they want access, you know, that's I, we don't need it. We don't yeah, need it. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I live in the epicenter of sports. We're doing right. the coolest things in sports. I mean, I'm fortunate that I get to work with the best athletes, the best owners, the best you know leaders in sports. Uh, I work with the best people across you know sports entertainment. So I've got the funnest job in the world. Right. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. It does. You, you mentioned Josh. Josh Harris, owner of the Sixers. Do you yeah. think he's going to be a good owner of the Washington Commanders? Uh, well, first, that's assuming he does. Um, by the way, smart. Just tell me smart. yes. Just tell me yeah. yes. Hey, you know what? You're a smart guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, honestly, I got a 780 on my SATs combined. <laughs> okay, so, so would you misspell your name? <laughs> probably. I, was, I, think, I think I was drunk from the night before. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I, I believe that Josh will get this done. That's my prediction. All right. A and um, I'm rooting for him. And um, look, that won't be popular in Philadelphia, but I think he grew up in Washington. Um, he, I, I think he, I think he would be a really good owner of that team. And I think he'll work his ass off to get that team to be a, you know, Super Bowl contender. And, uh, it'll be complicated for people in Philadelphia to understand, but y you know what, you know, he bleeds for the Sixers and he bleeds for, uh, he'll, he'll bleed for whatever team he owns part of. And what I'll tell you is, and you guys know this cause you have athletes on here all the time. Like sports is a business. You get traded, you know? James Harden bled for the Rockets until he came to the Sixers. Now he bleeds for the Sixers. You know, people bleed for the team that they own a part of, and I think you can do a good job, you know, with both teams, and I think he will. And yeah, I think I'm, that's a little controversial, by the way. A lot of people say, like, Michael, like, fuck you. You can't, you know, you can't, you know, own, you know, the Philadelphia Sixers and, the, you know, a team in a competing NFC. But I, I, yeah. I, I think I think he's going to work his ass off to be a great owner of both teams. I'm excited about that, and, and at the end of the day, he can just remind people from Philadelphia – Listen, we both hate Dallas. Like, yeah. fuck the Cowboys. There you go. So we got some mutual hatred on our side, which sometimes is, is a better bonding experience than actually rooting for the same Look, team. you know what the most important thing is? Josh has one responsibility in Philadelphia, and that's to be a perennial winner of NBA championship. You got to get chips. That's his job. And you know what? The team's very good, but we haven't proven shit yet until you win championships. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if he can win championships, you know, and be a real, build a real dynasty, Everyone's going to love that. And that's what he's got to do 
for the Philadelphia Sixers. That's what he wants to do. Uh, and I can tell you, I still want to help do that. I'm still committed to it. And people see that. You know, you see I still, I'm still spending time with my guys, with, with getting Joe and James, who are brothers to me, helping the organization any way I can because I care about the winning championships. Yeah, I, I can tell you're friends with James Harden because you did a, a very sneaky thing there where you just erased James Harden on the Nets. That was smart. You're like he bled for the Rockets, he bleeds for the Sixers. Wait, he played for the Knicks. Yeah, exactly. That's I, that's real <laughs> friendship. Like five I games. I forgot about that. That's <laughs> real friendship. Just pretend. Yeah. We just memory hold that whole thing. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, the Sixers on paper, they're definitely one of the more talented teams in the NBA, and they should make some noise. And we've got Max over here, who's a diehard Sixers fan. Yeah, Max. And uh, my guy. Yeah. Well, eh, you know, if things go bad, he'll 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 start motherfucking everyone. And you know what? He should. Yeah. Because it's the Sixers' responsibility to win championships. Again, that yeah. when you own a team, that is your responsibility to win championships. Each year you do that and you don't win a championship, you suck. So what, like, not talking about Josh because I think he is a good owner, but let's talk about just owners in other sports. Uh, w- the thing that we always struggle with as fans is, like, why an owner doesn't take every advantage they can to try to put out a championship team, whether it be – Coaching staff, like where there's not salary cap, right? Coaching staff, facilities. We saw that report with the NFL teams where some teams were getting like an F minus in strength and conditioning and stuff. What What's the disconnect? Why are, are people yeah. just buying teams and then when they buy the team, they're like, well, I've done my job? Look, I think different people buy teams for different reasons, different people in different financial situations. I can tell you if I were a fan, what I would want out of my owner is someone who had one goal which is to win championships for their city. That's what matters. I could tell you the Sixers haven't succeeded yet in 11 years that, you know, the ownership group has owned the team, but that is the only goal that everybody is thinking about. And I think if an owner's not doing that, they're probably not the right person to own the team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And by the way, look, some people say, look, I, this is a good business. It's a good investment. You know, it makes money. It is. But I got to tell you something. That is secondary. Like you own a team, you better wake up and go to bed figuring out how to get chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I agree hundred percent. That's how I think. That's how we would run a team. But there's a lot of people, especially in baseball, I've noticed they figured out that you don't have to be good to make a lot of money, and then that that hurts the sport as a whole. Um, Look, you, competition's great. You want as much competition as possible, and you want to make sure that people are, like you want in the NFL, thirty two teams competing to win, win the Super Bowl. In the NBA, you want 30 teams competing to win the NBA championship, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. And, and now you guys are getting involved in hockey too, right? I saw that Fanatics is – you guys are doing the jerseys for the NHL. Yeah. Oh. For, absolutely. Yeah. Have you have you heard anything from the fans? Because hockey fans, it takes them a while to adjust to anything. They're like a, a throwback bunch for the most Ho- part. Hockey fans are incredible fans. They're incredibly passionate. They, yeah. care, they care about the teams. I mean, they have some of the most passionate fans of any sport in the world. Yeah. So have, have you guys heard any feedback? Have you started the design process? For uh, you know, figuring out what these jerseys are going to look like because it's what 2024 that yeah. it's going to get started with you guys. Yeah, so we start. Um, we'll start in um, in about two years. Um, we'll we'll be on on ice. Um, we we are um, super excited to do it. Um, what people don't know today is we make so many jerseys already. So today, um, everything in baseball, um, uh, Nike is made by Fanatics in the NFL made by Fanatics. So we've been making um, tremendous amounts of Nike licensed products for years. It's been an incredibly successful partnership. We brought in the assortment. Fans have, have loved it. Look, you're right. Fans don't like a switch. I mean, that's just a normal thing. I think when I saw when it went from Reebok to Nike, fans complained. Yeah, yeah. Um, but by the way, we got lots of things we need to do to be better as well. Like we're always pushing the envelope. And I can tell you, we make today about 70% of the hockey jerseys uh, in the market today. And those fans love that jersey. If you look at the, the customer satisfaction ratings, what do they say about the jersey? They love the jersey. It's a better jersey than what was out there previously. But we got to keep getting better. There's things that we haven't done well. And like, like when I look at ourselves, I don't say like, here's what we do well. I'm like, here's what we suck at. And here's what we need to be better at. And we're thinking about that every day. Mm-hmm. So we were talking before about, uh, you know, the sales in terms of different championship teams. I don't want you to trash any team, but can you give me a team or college team or pro that you were shocked by where you're like, oh my God, look at look at how much, how how rabid this fan base was. What you generally look for is teams with great heritage that haven't won for, for a, a long, long time. time. So like if you want to say what would be an incredible hot market, people are probably gonna hate me for saying this. This is not who I'm rooting for. This is who would be great for Fanatics business, Dallas Cowboys. That, yeah, would, that, okay. would, that would be incredible. Yeah. Now I'm a that I'm would certainly be insane. Eagles, Eagles are my guys. You know, that's you know, lots of friends who play on the team, always rooting for the Eagles was uh 
Um, happy they got to the Super Bowl, but they didn't get it done this year. I'm looking forward to them getting it done next year. Yeah. So, so what would be a team though that we didn't expect? Like, or maybe it's college. We're yeah. like, oh wow, I'll, that I'll was give, shocking. I'll tell you, give you some examples of teams yeah. you wouldn't expect. Like the Buffalo Bills would be yeah. spectacular for business. Yeah. Because they have great heritage. Um, that could be a shocker to you. I think um, everybody in Buffalo would buy five hundred dollars worth of merchandise. Yeah. Like well, the, the Browns are. actually think about everyone who grew up in Buffalo and has any connectivity to Buffalo. Yeah. Would buy five hundred dollars in merchandise. Yeah. 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 Well, um, the Browns. Browns are good. Browns, yeah. Browns Lions. Are good. Yeah. Steelers. It's been so hard. For, it's been so long for the Lions. I'm not sure I know. That, I'm not sure that I have. I'm not sure that I know that answer. But that's one. it's fascinating to me because then you also have like the big big city. Like, would you rather have the Bills win one, the first one forever? Or like the Giants, I would assume the Giants still would trump now, everything. Now, um, Bills would be bigger. Really? Yeah. Now here, here's the interesting thing: if a team wins perpetually, like the Patriots did, yeah. There's, even it, eventually, there's only like there's I would fatigue, joke with Robert yeah. and Jonathan Kraft. Like, there's only so many times someone can buy an AFC Championship yeah. T-shirt. There's, there's like, gets full. Right. Yeah. I mean, they they won ten AFC championships. Right. I mean, you can only have so many AFC Championship T-shirts. So yeah. you, now, I think you should have unlimited, but you know that's the reality. If you were to design like your your perfect year for maximum sales, would it be like the classic Lakers, Cowboys, Yankees fan? Um. Well, it would be like um. For basketball, it has to be the Sixers, period, end of story. Yeah. And by the okay. way, we, we haven't we, we yeah. won for a that long time. So this is, uh -huh. I, and by the way, I'm going to take all the business down. It, whatever the best outcome would be in basketball, I don't give a shit. It's got to be the Sixers. Okay. That's the only way I can think. But okay. uh, baseball, probably the Yankees? Baseball, Yankees would be um, as incredible. Yankees and Cubs, you, you, you'd like either one of those teams to win every year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, keep guessing. Let's uh, go. So hockey, what would be the biggest market in hockey? Probably the maybe the Maple Leafs or maybe the a Maple Leafs team? would be insane. Yeah, yeah. It would be insane. But Red way, Wings maybe. Your, they your, been... Red Wings would be great. Yeah, your, your, your guys Blackhawks. Blackhawks. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be while. back in a long time. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm rooting for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like everybody in Washington for the first pick got some Capitals merch too. When Capitals were great. The they, they were great. They yeah, were great. A lot they of Ovi jerseys. They, they, they were great. Yeah. Now, what about Slam Ball? I heard that you're investing in Slam Ball. Which Slam Ball team would, would move most you, merchandise? You know, I'm going to have to, you know, like, honestly, <laughs> Big Cat's my advisor for Slam Ball. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so he would know who the best teams would be. Who, who would that um, be, Big Cat? It's the uh, the Dragons. <laughs> um, Jake, quick, hurry up. Find me something. Uh, the Slammers. The uh, um, the Bruisers. The Bruisers. The Bruisers are great. Um, Jake, Jake, Jake. Bouncers, Diablos, uh, Mob, I, Rumble, I, I, Slashers, and Steel. I misspoke. I, when I said tries, Dragons, I said Diablos. Guy tries, I said Diablos. The guy tries to bury me, then he can't turn <laughs> shit, and he can't even name a team. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of burying you. I, but uh, I, like, I actually like to be buried. So yeah, yeah, all right. So, I'll bury you. so y your parties are legendary. Yeah. Uh, the one July 4th in the Hamptons, legendary. What's the policy on like uh, extra plus twos? Yeah, so speaking, we, we, no, I'm not we, speaking we, on we, anyone's we, we, behalf. We can, we can address but, this. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we, ask me the question. You All right, so me. so Dave was trying to go to your party. You got invited to your party. I I think the the story is that he uh, his girlfriend, lovely uh, woman, so Silvana. The, 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 the answer and it was Dave, Dave and Silvana, yeah. and then Silvana's sister and her boyfriend. They wanted two more tickets so they could all go, and you said absolutely not, Dave, uh, and spit in his face. Um. That's close. Okay. Okay, so let me give you so the you real... So you did spit in his face. No, no. Oh. Let me give you the real story. <laughs> so first, let me start with saying I love Dave. Yes. Okay, all love for Dave. He was a dumbass. Okay? Oh. He was a dumbass. Okay. Okay, so that party has 350 people that come. Um, Dave was lucky to be invited. Ooh. Um, I'm just being honest. <laughs> this is not going to go well. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, Dave, no. Dave, Dave was lucky to be invited. Uh -huh. He, um, we have, again, 350 people. You know who comes to this party. Um, and Dave... And, and by the way, we call we, we only we invite four hundred people, three hundred fifty people come. Like basically everyone who's invited comes to the party. Yeah. And uh, we reached out to hey, are you coming? He said, well, I need to bring three people with me. There was not. By the way, Jay Z and Beyonce don't bring three people with them. Um, Drake's not but bringing three Port people Roy. with him. And so I love Dave, and I say this with lots of love for Dave. Like we were like, is he serious? And then I actually, someone sent me, my kid sent me, uh, because she, uh, she watches, uh, Kylie watches. Um, BFFs. Yeah, with, with, yeah, yeah. with Dave with, and, with Josh. And, 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 yeah. So yeah, it, Brianna. It, 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 and she sent me the clip 
of Dave saying that that I, I was dead to him and he was never coming to my party again, so we didn't invite him last year. Oh. Yeah. So, well, he, so we got to fix this. Yeah, he's, 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 out, he's out for the No, no, no. We got to fix this. Yeah. You no. got to invite him this year. Yeah, it's not happening. Why? L- listen. Put, I, f- put him I, on I, for four. Yeah. L- listen. Let me tell you what I did with the white party this year. At the end of the year, we said, who were the 75 people that added the least value? We cut them. It was like a football team. You, oh. you guys like grade people on party performance? <laughs> we do. <laughs> How do you do that? What's, we, what we, makes for a good party guest? By the way, you want someone who's people are going to love being around, who are going to be life of the party, who are going to add value there. Yeah. But by the way, we have, I mean, I, I had someone offer me a million dollars to get two people in last year to the party. They said, I'll donate a million dollars to your charity. I'm like, you can't buy your way into this party. This why, is, why is this party so cool? Now I want to go. I, yeah. If you've seen the pictures, it's basically, it's, it's good, pretty it's much like everybody. But, right. but, I mean, but Dave, Dave was invited to come with his girlfriend, but it wasn't good enough. He had to bring, what he, he was bringing his, his grandma. And, no, and, and, no, and it, was, great, great, it was, it was, listen, I understand the spot he was in. If, you're, Listen, if your girlfriend's you, sister wants to come too, it's tough. And they're sometimes visiting. Sometimes you gotta leave people at home. Okay. I would bring so much value to this party. I get beer punk started at like 4 o'clock By in the, the afternoon. Pa- the party starts at 5 p.m. Yeah. I'd show up early. And, That's and, how good of a and, guest and, I would and, be. And, yeah. So I don't know if you guys know, this year at the party, unfortunately, we've had, with only 350 people coming, we've had some significant accidents at the party over the past two years. Okay. Um, the first accident that happened was... Um, I want to make sure I get this right. Charlie D'Amelio sliced Dixie D'Amelio's finger trying to cut a bagel at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. <laughs> that led to several stitches. That was year one's accident. So we actually thought we would be really prepared and we brought in medical staff for the party because even though there's 350 people, we had a whole you know, medical SWAT team there. <laughs> and um, crazy. So I, I, I went to the bat. So after like, 12 people performed, you know, you know, just like this incredible, like just natural performances that broke out of the party. Um, I went to the boys' room. And I was knew I was turning 50 this year. And so my my 50th birthday was coming a couple weeks up, which was pretty depressing to me. And so Joel and Bede's running out to me, Michael, you gotta come here, you gotta come here. Uh, Camille got hurt, this is my girlfriend. He goes, Camille got really hurt. I I'm like, I remember this, yeah. I'm like, Joe, like, sh- like stop. Like, I'm not, I'm not falling for this. Right. Like, I'm like, like, no, you're not tricking me. And then they're like, you gotta go upstairs. And all of a sudden she, she, we just had a, a, our third, my third daughter, our second daughter together a few weeks earlier. Thank you. And so she fainted. Um, now, I would say the truth be told that she tried to drink with the boys and wasn't able to handle it. So yep. Uh-huh. Yep. She's still going with fainting. It's a, it's a real debate within the, the Rubin household. I, I, I would probably side with you on of this. Course. Yeah, yeah, this is a, no matter, like, and, and she actually gets mad at me when I tell you this. She clearly, she's going with a faint I'm going with. But anyway, yeah. she, she, she fell over and hurt herself very badly. So I left, I had to leave. At twelve fifteen, the party. Why'd you have to leave? Because she had to go to the hospital. They thought she had That's a broken neck. That's why you got neck. the medical tent. The medical. Like, hey, send them off. So, so, I'm, this is so, my party. So, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> so the EMT doctor comes in the room. Joelle was in the room, and they're like, you know, her neck could be broken. I'm like, she's fine. Give her a drink. Like, don't worry about it. I'm like, she's good. Like, put her back in the game. Who cares? I love um, it. And, 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 and um, Joelle screaming like, I've had this happen. You've got to go to the hospital right now. And someone else is screaming at me. And so obviously I was like, do I leave my 300 friends here or do I, um, do I go to the hospital and be a good guy? And so I made the, the decision I had to make. All right, yeah. so that was I, probably I, better. I don't say yeah. it's the right decision. No, so, it was so, in the so now long term. Now, now I'm in the hospital and like literally as I'm getting there, someone else shows up, like one of our, our friends. And I'm like, Camille's like, why are you here? She's like, oh my God, when Drake got up and started performing, I, I jumped into a speaker, she had blood coming out of her head. Oh my God. She cracked her head open. So literally, I'm in the hospital, and I've got Camille there waiting. I've got this other friend of mine, BJ, there, who's got blood squirting out of her head. We need like 20 stitches in her head. So we've now had, with a total of 350 people, we've had like three real accidents you need to, in two years. You need to do the party the, at the hospital. The, the, well, that would be a good idea. <laughs> that would be a good idea. But so we've now, so we're now increasing the, the medical staff this year, but the party starts at 5 p.m. It goes till 4 a.m. And I came back from the hospital. I, of course, left Camille in the hospital once. I knew she was going to leave. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I'm like, Vital signs I'm coming good, back I'm in hot. Yeah, I'm yeah. FaceTiming Trav. I'm like, Trav, I'm coming back in hot. <laughs> and there were about 200 people left when I got back. And we went into high gear from the 2, the two to 4 a.m. strong this year. That's nice. the mark of a good party. If, if at least 5% of your guests go to the hospital afterwards, yeah. you did your job. Well, I think we're right now we're running a half a percent in cash. In, we in can need, bump those numbers. Need up. Yeah. medical assistance. Yeah. Yeah. Get yep. like a, a bouncy we, we, air we, cast. We also had, at this point. We, had, we also had a nameless person who was 
drunk out of control. I was friends with who had to get thrown out and then try to sneak back in as a waiter who got thrown out last year. Oh, wow. But we have 90 security at the party. Like, this is like... I would imagine. Yeah, it's you, you, a you, lot you, of you, very you, famous people. You, you, like, people try to sneak in through the bushes. People try to come in. Like, it's it's crazy the way people try Can to get we in. Can we do... This. Maybe one year we do... Dave like, should try to sneak in this year. Well, no, we should do a deal where it's like... You know, we'll try to sneak in. We're going to test your security for you. Do it. So you can tell your security guards, like, look, these guys are trying to sneak in, so don't, like, you know, hurt them. But let's see how our security You're operations are. You're too sweet are. to hurt. Yeah, yeah come yeah, on. Yeah, I'll just. You should try. I'll just be rolling on the you, ground. You, yeah. Um, that, I mean, yeah, I, you should invite Billy to this party. Uh, that would be funny. He would ruin your whole party. My, my technique, I would I would break in early. I would break in like a week early, like inside man. So we had that this yeah. year. People were hiding in. People were hiding in the bushes, like in, uh, off the beach, trying to like crawl in. We saw that. Or that was like a one o'clock catch. They, How, they tunnel in like they're El Chapo trying to get into it, your party. It, it's it's literally you haven't seen a thing like this. I've also, never seen anything like, this. like you would. By at our Super Bowl party this year, which. We'd love to have yes. you guys at and Dave at. Very yes. welcome. Which was, oh, wow. And Dave he, gets invited yes. to the B party. Invited, he's oh, a, no. He's invited to the Super Bowl oh, party. No. Um, <laughs> we, 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 we like that. We had... Um, we had um, Was Drake at that one, too? Or? Drake was there. Yeah. He, oh, okay. he, he, he was there. And um, at that party... We had, I kept saying to our guys, people are going to try sneaking like crazy. And we had, it was an outside party. We had it like, you know, again, 50, 60 security. And they kept saying, Michael, you're being ridiculous. Like, like, like this is not the white party. Like, it's going to be fine. They had 150 people that they caught trying to sneak into the Super Bowl party this year. Oh, man. Okay. We're very well, we sneaky. Gotta, we, could, we could definitely I, get it. I would yeah. like you to try. Yeah, we're going to try. Both Perfect. parties? You don't know when. Yeah, but both parties. Yeah, okay. You don't know when. But Super Bowl party, I want you guys at. Okay, yeah, I'll go to that one. with a, The other one, he does not want us The at. other one, no. he wants. <laughs> I think he wants us to try to sneak in so he can arrest us. Yeah. Now, the, one party is at my house where there's a space constraint. You can only have 350 right, people. That's right. all that fit. Right. One party is in, in Vegas. That's and was, fair. was in Arizona outside. That's we fit fair. our 1,100 so, people. So how do you grade a party guest? You said, like, on value added to the party. Well, it sounds like you're giving, we, like... People, people I, I say this now seriously. Like, it's actually super awkward because you have so many people that you're boys with, that you're friends with, who want to come. And the issue is we have space for 350 people. So, like, at the end of the day, we're trying to curate the best 350 people. That sounds like people. a lot of stress. You're basically it, it, throwing a wedding every year. We do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, no, that's very way, stressful. It's, it's, it's way more stressful than wedding. Yeah. Because the wedding, you only have, like, twice the amount of people trying to come. And uh, also, someone, like, not getting invited to a wedding. Like, when someone doesn't invite me to a wedding, I'm like, good. I don't have to, like, spend money and go to this. I'm just thinking, good, I don't need pressure. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. What's the, what's the seating situation like? Are there enough couches or are people just standing the whole time? It's, the, I mean, it's it's mostly standing until you get I'm out. Oh, I'm, I'm out, out too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that party it, sounds shitty. By the way, it's got four. We start with everyone's outside on the uh, on the decks and on the beach, and then we go downstairs for dinner. There is seating for dinner actually. And then oh, upstairs okay. the roof. Back in. Performance to start. Then we go into a nightclub that we have built. Oh, oh, man. that sounds pretty fun. That sounds pretty sick. That does have a lot of seating. Uh, this probably explains the difference between us and you. But if I were in your position, I would probably be retired by now. Do you? Are you ever going to retire from anything, or is your life just like? This is what you want to do for the rest of your life. You want to be building businesses. You want to be in the action. Or do you see a, a time where you're just like, you know what? I've done pretty well for myself. I think I'll just go live on a beach. Zero point zero 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 chance of ever retiring. Okay. Zero chance of ever slowing down. I fucking love this. I have a blast. Like, I'm so lucky to do what I do. And by the way, I'm going to be doing one thing, which is building fanatics for the rest of my life. I mean, this is, you know, I'm the luckiest person on the planet to get to work with so many, you know, incredible athletes, entertainers, owners, l league executives. Um, like, like I've got the greatest job in the world. Like, if I slowed down, I would die. And so I love like it. Like a shark, yeah. Yeah, like I, I, gotta, I gotta keep doing this. There's nothing, like... Nothing. Maybe, maybe, By maybe the way, I'd I, like, delude yeah. myself because I tell myself that someday I would like to retire. But what would maybe, you? What would you do? I don't know. Just hang out. Like, what would you do? Bet on sports. I would probably do the exact same thing that I do all day, every day, if I was retired. Yeah, I'd wake up. I'd probably try to start getting in shape. I would maybe try but, to live way, near. You, you got a little work to do. Yeah, that. I got a little work to do. I know. <laughs> Listen, I would live near a horse track so I could gamble on horses during the day, and then at night I would watch the games and gamble on those games. So I really believe this, and I've seen it happen time after time. I think retirement is basically you're saying you want to die. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, for me, for someone like me, I retire. I might as well just say I want to, like, I'm going to be dead because yeah. my brain works with activity. You know, yesterday morning, I don't even know where I was yesterday. I mean, yeah, like I work 18 hours a day, seven days a week. Grind mindset. And I love it. And I grind like crazy. And I wake up every day excited and then I go to bed and I'm exhausted. And I wake up three hours later every day. I wake up three hours after I go to bed. I'm like, okay, I got to get one or two more hours sleep just so I don't kill myself. But I need four or five hours, not three per day but you also do enjoy your life 
a lot because like I don't know every other week I'll like pop on your Instagram stories you'll be on a yacht no no how, how many I, yachts this year um I was uh it's a great question how many yacht great, vacations great this question. year Michael two two, two? I, listen everything's public wait is that 2023 that's 2022 baby not one yet in okay, right. but and, wait and, and by the way I hosted a great party on my boat the day before New Year's where lots of people that are important to me were there. Yeah. But probably some of those yacht trips you don't count as a vacation. They're, they look they're awesome. Work, they're work yacht trips. The cr the holiday yacht trip, I'd say, is vacation. <laughs> yeah. I've got lots of people I work with there, lots of people at sports and entertainment. And we're, by the way, we're always talking about ideas. Like a lot of things, like you got to realize the way we built our business. Like I have so many people around me that I learn from, that I, you know, that I gain information from that helps me to think about how to build our business better. So like if you think about how we bought Mitchell and Ness, that was like an organic conversation that I was having with Jay-Z about, you know, how people, you know, I was basically, you know, because we own lids and I was basically talking about how do we make headwear more and more relevant each year. And he was telling me, like, you're thinking about it the wrong way. You've got to make sure that, you know, people, are, you know, the way you get dressed is like people put on their jeans, they put on their hoodie, they put on their hat. That's part of your wardrobe. Like, don't think about, you know, a hat as being, you know, not part of your wardrobe. And then he's like, by the way, we should buy Mitchell Ness. And sure enough, you know, we bought, we, 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 bought, yeah. way, we bought Mitchell Ness with Jay-Z, with Little Baby, with Meek, with um, LeBron, with KD, with, um, you know, Joel and James, uh, CP, Book, um, you know, CJ, like, and we did it with Kay Hart. Like, so all these guys are our partners. And by the way, they're helping to build the business. It's going to be a great investment for them. I think they got in the first year, they invested like a 12% of their money back on the investment in the first year. It's like Damn. unheard of. Well, so, it is. A, I mean, Mitchell and Ness is a great brand, so right. that made perfect sense. Right. And, and so, and by the way, they're helping to build the business. And so for me, like, that's the thing that people don't understand. I do do some fun things. Like, the white party is fun. The hangover is not fun, by the way. The white party is fun. You probably have a staff of, like, yeah, IV, you got IVs. You got the IV everything. nurses coming you, know, you don't get hungover. Yeah. You've got I, all the good I, drugs I, that I, we don't I, know I, about. I, I, yeah. I, will, I, will, I will tell you. There's some chamber you sleep so in. So, I'm going to admit, like, I'm not, like, this year at the Super Bowl party was maybe the most I'd ever drank in my life. Okay. And I our party started, I think, uh, 2 o'clock. And then I went straight to something else. Then I, I went late. And I remember I looked at someone at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like... Why am I here? Yeah. There's something the matter with me. I went home. I woke up. And Camille said to me, how do you feel? I said, I feel great. Hmm. She goes, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, there's, there's something not right with you. Yeah. yeah. Did you drink champagne the day before the Super Bowl? No. Yeah. Okay. Who, why would you do that as a, Eagles, as a Philly guy? Fellow Philly guy. He, Max did that. Before Max was the also Bowl. the no, drunkest but, he's but, ever but, been but, in his but, life. I didn't have one party. sip of alcohol. And so our Super Bowl party. Not once I didn't have it. Like I also like I actually don't like alcohol. I actually think it's disgusting. That's I mean that. Same. So I'm a guy's guy, but so I could not drink for eight weeks and then I could like shot a clock and I'm in for twenty yeah, shots. Yeah. 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 Uh, how much of buying lids was the fact that when you walk into a lids in the mall, it just smells awesome? Mm. Um that Good was question. not first of all, I didn't know that. I like to learn everyday things. Oh, it is, it's a great smell. It's, a great it's, a, smell. it's like a very unique smell. It's that and Auntie Anne's are the two best smells yeah, in first of all. You can put me Auntie, in a hot Auntie topic Anne's, and yeah. then in a lids and I'll be able to tell you in a half second which is which if I was blind. So maybe we should do that and do like a little competition of like tell me smell when you're in lids. I, you might have just created a new marketing campaign. You see, I always say I like to have people around me. I like to learn from them today. I've yeah. learned two things. One, the lid smells great. And two, that we should actually start to do the lid smell test. Well, okay. yeah, it's it's you know it's one of those things that I, I think most people don't even realize. And maybe you don't, you know, you own the business and you didn't realize it but lids has it's got a unique smell that sticks with the consumer and like you just know that you're in a lids it's I, great so i i know what, what i'll tell you about lids is they have it, it's an incredible brand they have an incredible uh consumer base it's a you know much younger customer than that you know overall fanatics customer um it's a you know it's it's someone who buys a lot of hats and hats are part of the wardrobe and you know look we have you know we own a lot of cool brands you know obviously lids is an incredible brand uh, Mitchell Ness is an incredible brand. Tops is an incredible brand. Um, and, you know, Fanatics is really where you get everything in sports. So I got an idea for you. Ready for this one? Because uh, you like being around ideas, guys. What about selling extra flammable jerseys? So if you know a guy's... flammable. Yeah, if you know a guy's about to get traded or leave a team, because there's nothing more more pathetic than when someone tries to burn a jersey and it, like, doesn't fully burn. So it's special jerseys that you buy and you're, like, extra flammable. Unless this was for like David Blaine, I'm probably thinking it's not going to be very good for our insurance. Okay, like, all right. I, well, I think, these, these, I, no I, bad I, ideas, right? No bad no, ideas. No bad no ideas. Bad ideas. Yeah. No bad but ideas. you make him sign I'm, a waiver. I'm actually liking the smell <laughs> test better. I'm right now. I'm thinking we, we're, we're like one for two in big ideas. Okay, okay, today. okay. All right. Well, we, we can workshop it. We can workshop it. Can Maybe what about if it was a? Well, I guess that would. 
like a non-flammable where you can burn it. It looks burned, but then you can like put it out and it's totally fresh and fine and fine. But you want people to buy more jerseys. So yeah, look, if your player gets traded, we want you coming back to fanatics. He wants you to burn really it and fine. come back. No, we don't really want you to burn it. We, well, we extra flammable. You, you should, we should celebrate the player and what they did for the team before. That's you can, you not can how have fans a, work. A, a, a check mark. <laughs> it sounded nice. My, my, that's I, a perfect I, I, world. I, I, yeah, that's I think, a perfect world that you just described where Dave gets all four don't. invites. Yeah, that's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you when you when you check out on the website, it says like I consent to giving you my if Dave information, comes back, by if Dave comes back and says, "Listen, I was a little ahead of myself. Uh, do you I should, know, I, I, David? I, should, I shouldn't have asked for a plus four. Mm-hmm. I'd really like to come with my girlfriend on my own. No chance. I would think about it. Other than that, I'm gonna love him forever. He'll always be my boy, but he'll never be at the white party. Yeah, yeah. If I love somebody, I would invite them to my massive party. Yeah. yeah it's With a massive. lot of invites. That's, just that's, me. that's the Super Bowl party. Make it the Dave Portnoy party. party. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that for Super Bowl. We, we, can, we can celebrate <laughs> him at the Super Bowl. But yeah, I think PFT is right. Check out, there's a waiver. Yeah, and then also you can order flammable. Like, I agree. You can order to how this, flammable. Yeah. Like I want a flammable. new bomb flammable. Medium flammable. It's just like I'm size. Just it's think, no different I'm than ordering the different flammable size products version. aren't going to be a big category for us. All right, I'm just I, I, listen. I, I, if I'm you ready, sold ready. extra flammable jerseys like Packers jerseys for Aaron Rodgers fans, they would be it would be well, awesome. Well, I'll Bonfire. Tell you, I'll tell you what's going to be really exciting. If Aaron Rodgers comes to the Jets, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've been mm-hmm. he, he, you've been looking at the he, news, he, being he, like, he, let's gonna go. Sell, he's going to sell a lot of jerseys. I can tell you that. Have you ever thought about entering with a partnership with a player and then being like, hey, you should demand another trade so we can sell more jerseys? I would never do anything like that. No, never. Um, but if that player wanted to come to the Sixers and they were going to make the <laughs> yeah, team better, yeah yeah, 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 that might, you know, could see something like that potentially happening. Uh, do you still trust the process? Are you a big process guy? We're process guys on the show. Huge yeah. process uh, guys. Uh, I'm about champion. I'm a championship guy. I'm a chip guy. So you're results guy. I'm, I'm all about the chip. I don't, you need I, the process to yeah, get the results. Yeah. 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 You, you, you know what? I'm all about, there's one thing I care about with the Sixers, it's winning championships. And, I, and honestly, like, I don't, I don't need to look back. I don't need to look at what the team, what we got right and wrong, because we got a lot right. We got a lot wrong, too. By the way, we made a lot of mistakes. Um, and you know what? What we got to do is win championships. That's the only thing that matters. Right, but the, I, I guess we've talked about the process that the Sixers use on the show a lot, and it, it worked. You did everything that, that you wanted to do, and you're going to obviously like hit or miss on certain draft picks or whatever. But if you're a uh, – like from the ownership standpoint – how much patience do you have to have while that's all taking place? Because you can't, yeah, you know yeah. that. So you I can't... would say first, it hasn't worked yet mm-hmm. because we haven't won a championship. I'd argue it has. The process yeah, worked. Yeah. So I'm. Um, so we can disagree. Um, I would say to me, the measurement of success is, is winning championships. So I. Um, and I, I would tell you that. Look, I think what, what's great about Philly now is it's a great free agency destination. Like people want to be in Philly. They see the strength and leadership that we have in the ownership group which I'm not part of anymore, in the lead- leadership team, in the locker room. It's a great locker room. I mean, we have so many great guys that, that, that work together uh, as an organization. So I think it's a great free, you know, I think it's a great free agency destination. I think Philly is super exciting. By the way, it's a cheap state to live in, 3% taxes versus 50, New York, that's 15% taxes. So for someone who's making a lot of money, you know, that could be, you know, $5 million in extra cash a year they save if you're a max player. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, for me, uh, I'm measuring one thing. Chips. I, I see. I think the process worked because I think that winning a championship is so hard, and it is. You have a three percent chance, right? And, like and said, it's got, getting. It's more like putting out a uh, contending team for a stretch of time, and then everything else is kind of, you know, it's it's a little bit so, of up to luck. So I'm calling bullshit on you, okay? Because when our mutual friend just walked in here and Ron, and he, you you gave him shit for not winning the final four. Yeah. He said, well, we got to the final four and you said you're a loser. Well, yeah, because he was like, well, I was happy they got to the final four. Like you. Right. So you're, right. you're asking me but, to be happy about a process because we have a contender. But winner. you have to. I'm that was be happy the, when we have championships. But that was the first final four Miami you, had ever going, been to. You're going both ways. No, no, no. That was the first final four Miami had ever been Pick to. Pick a place on the street to if stay, stay on the side of the road. If they can build a sustained, like, you know, team that goes to the final four multiple years, that's different. Like you. That was so, the first so, time. So I understand who, he can be happy. So who, who's your team? Who's your favorite team? Uh, probably the Bears. And so if the Bears... Got, they have not built anything. So if the Bears got your championship, didn't win, you'd be happy after they lost in the Super Bowl? I, if the Bears got to a point... Well, actually, we you're had this debate. Me, no, you, no, we had this debate. No, 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 no. You're we, not really a winner. We you're actually had this debate, enough. and you're you're now about to lose this debate. We had no. this debate because we said that, would you rather... If uh, Commanders fan, Bears fan, our teams suck, uh, we said in the next 50 years... If you won one title but missed the playoffs all the other 49 years, 
or you could lose the Super Bowl 15 times. We said we'd take losing the Super Bowl 15 times because mm-hmm. uh, that right. would be some sick. Like you win a lot of NFC Championship games. That'd be awesome. That's a lot of partying. That you <laughs> be get really to do. good. So many Super Bowls you get to go to. <laughs> yeah. That's a real. It's loser talk. That's a, we know it's loser right. talk. That's a complicated. I agree. That's a complicated. One. Yeah, because like that's listen. It would suck never to win one, but you'd also have a lot of great memories. From a business standpoint, think about how many more NFC Championship T-shirts that you could sell if you go to 15 Super Bowls than if you just win one Super Bowl. Yeah. 15 but, Super Bowls kind of a but dynasty. If you think about something from a fan's perspective, you care about one thing, winning championships. No, that's true. But I, I, listen, you've given... Listen. We've muddied the waters here. You need to here. start marketing more to losers. <laughs> that's your problem. Yeah. you got to get in, in the I, loser I, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. I just... I always love the process because I think it's very rare in sports where a team goes all in on a strategy and tells the fans... Because a lot of times what happens with, with ownership is they will tell you one thing and be doing another. And so the transparency of the process is what we're fans of, where it's like, the, the if, I, if you I think give it to me I, straight, I, think, I can deal with it. I think communication yeah. in whatever you do is one of the most important things in life. And what I've learned is there's many complicated situations and people don't know how to communicate. By the way, including in locker rooms, in sports, in business. Like to me, when you, you got something you got to deal with, just fucking deal with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that, I'm always like, I hate the... You know, I'm, you know, I'm something's festering in my brain, but you know, like, I don't work that way. Like, I got an issue with you. I'm going to go grab you and tell you, you know, I see two people that I work with that are like each whining me like, guys, get in the fucking office. And let's solve this. Yeah. Like, let's not have this bullshit and kill brain cells. So to me, communication is everything. And so when you talk about communicating with the fan base, yeah. of course, they're going to appreciate honesty and transparency and telling them the truth, which is why I tell you all the things we screw shit up all the time, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So this has been awesome. I have one last question for you. Uh, rowback question. Promo code take 20 percent off uh, first purchase joggers, Q-zips, polos, hoodies, great golf gear, rowback.com promo code take. Let's do a headline grab. Uh, I feel like you got to do this with anyone who's got uh, crazy wealth like you. Hold on. I, w- I want to know first. What are we promoting? What Roback. Roback.com. Educate me. Uh, oh, great the gear. You should buy them. They're the best joggers, performance hoodies, polos, uh, shoe zips. I, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it basically is Do you want to go buy one today? Yeah. We you have some. Have we some, have some for you. I want to buy one with No, promo. you will love this hoodie. I want to buy one. With, I'm what gonna size buy are you? Medium? A small now. Baby. You're small. Small now. We're going to give you some right now. It used to be actually large. So you do look great. Uh I want I want your diet tips. You just go no carbs. The shot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the the question I had for you, we have to ask this for a headline grab. Michael Rubin, will you ever run for president? Zero chance. Zero. Zero. Zero is. I've Can, learned the ten x mentality. Grant uh-oh, Cardone. He taught me that zero is still a chance. I don't know. So I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's a brutal job. I would never want it. Um, it's it's like you can't get shit done as the president. Like I, the thing I love about what I do is I can as a CEO in an entrepreneurial company, I can make things happen. I can see something today and come up with an idea and I can effectuate that idea. I can see something we've done wrong and fix it, okay? As the president, it's a purely political job. And so I don't like that. So no, if you told me today I could be president today, I would have zero points of interest in that job. Sounds right? like you want to be king. Ooh. Would you be king of the United yeah. States? King sounds a lot more interesting. It okay, does. Right. A lot yeah, more there's fun. our headline yeah, okay, grab. Okay, Michael yeah, Rubin a lot more wants to, to become, become king. king. If you can have kings, of <laughs> yeah, course. Yeah. But by the way, as a king, you know what I want to be? A great leader that brought everyone together. But ultimately, I think to have the influence to bring people together is really important. So the problem with the president is you start with like a country where everyone's divided. And I don't like that. I don't like having, and I stay away from politics because I don't want to be in the middle of politics. What I want to do is bring people together. By the way, our white party brings people together. My Super Bowl party brings people together. Fanatics brings people together. I like to bring people together. And what I don't want to do is spend time like working hard to not get things done. I want to get results and push hard. Yeah, yeah. So what I like about that, though, is I think that if you want to be president, that should automatically disqualify you from ever being president. Well, I'm going to yeah. tell you one thing about being president. I firmly believe this. If there's one rule that should be put in place right now, you guys tell me what you think. There needs to be an age max. You cannot be president past yeah. 65. Yeah. You, that makes you, sense. You, for the first term. It yeah. does. It makes it, me it, laugh. It, it, like, you can't have... People, yeah, because you're making changes that will have effects like, like, on when I, you're I not around. I want people that are in the sharpest period of their life. And by the yeah. way, I'm not, I'm not trying to criticize anyone, you know, but in general, like, I a think... It sounds like a shot if at there's, Sleepy Joe. If there's a hypothetical <laughs> old president out there... Oh, we, we've had the last two presidents. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, it's, you're two, right. You're the last right. two have been old. Uh-huh. I, I th- agree I with think this. first term, you have to be under 65 when you take it, uh, it, when you become president. I think that would be amazing. I think you'd have sharper people that could be more aggressive. Like, I want the leader of our country to be, you know, a great leader and bring people together, but be able to really affect change. And, you know, I work 18 hours a day and I 
no, my energy doesn't stop, and I want someone to go work the same way. That's I crazy. think the president I, should be 18 years old. It's crazy. Just doing no. wild shit. I work 19 <laughs> hours a day, but I guess I'm just built different from you. You yeah. might, you yeah, must be. that's yeah. okay. Are you? Yeah. So come uh, up with an axe. We need you. I got. I got. One, I got one last last question. This is last, another headline last, grab. Last, last. This is what we do. We say this is the last question, and then you, if you ask a last last question after that, nobody ever gets up for it. So you can just keep the interview going. This is another headline grab. Uh, you found yourself. I guess you were kind of like at the middle. When I think about Meek Mill and Robert Kraft, and those two very, guys, very, very similar. Those two guys are in the same sentence. I'm like, well, Michael Rubin was definitely involved in this conversation. Um, Meek Mill texted Lamar Jackson and said, or he texted Robert Kraft about Lamar Jackson and said, the "Patriots need to sign this guy. Let's get it done." I have to assume that you were involved in some of those conversations. Uh, As a Philly guy, were you were you upset at Meek Mill for being like, "Hey"? Why are you telling the Patriots to sign Lamar? So two things. One, I give you my absolute word. I was not in the middle of that conversation in any way, shape, or form. I saw it in uh, on Twitter when you saw it on Twitter. Mm. That's number one. Mm. Number two, no, I was not upset because you know what? If, if you're in the sports business and you have authentic relationships with players, you want what's best for the player. And so I know that a fan base may not understand that, but if Lamar Jackson at that point decided that he may be interested in something else, I think... You know, I want him to be happy. And so now my boy O just went there and O's a brother to me. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy for those guys and hopefully they just do amazing things together. Mm -hmm. But like, look, my business, if I'm just keeping it real and people won't like hearing this, it makes you, you're really a supporter of your friends. If they own a team, you're a supporter of the friend, you're a supporter of the player. So you want your guys to do well. So, you know, I was excited for Odell when he went to Baltimore, not because I'm a Ravens fan, because I'm not but because I wanted a great opportunity for him to, to go out and do everything he can do, and I was pumped for him. Yeah. Would I prefer him to be an Eagle? Would I prefer him to be a Patriot? Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, but I was happy for him because I thought it was a great opportunity. So uh, this has been awesome. Get ready for us to sneak into your party. I can't wait. It's going to be great. I'm going to be in there so hard. Yeah, we're going to – I want to get, I'm, I'm, get like the whole moss suit where you like look I'll like make, trees. I'll make you guys a deal. If you guys get in, you can stay. Okay. Okay. I Done. love it. How, how's that? If you get in, you Deal. can stay. I've Deal. snuck into harder places before. I, yeah. I've got into Guy Fieri's Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. No, no. We might have to make a video. That's, yeah. Okay. I'm, oh, Deal. You've, you, you've you created have, a very you, a very powerful you, you, monster. You get in, you guys can stay. The only problem is over July 4th, our one vacation a year. Because we work 19 hours a day. Let yeah, say, 19 let, hours let, a day. Take, yeah. take let, really let, no vacations. Let me tell you one thing. You'd have a blast if you got there. Uh, we'll be yeah. there. Okay. We, at some point, we will be there. I'm going to get in. Yeah. I'm going to get in. Um. All right. You can FaceTime Dave. Yeah. Oh, well, no, that would be a bad idea. <laughs> All right. Well, Michael Rubin, thank you so much. Appreciate you coming by, man. Always welcome on. And uh, you're the best. Fun hanging with you guys. Before we get to FAQs, quick word from our friends at Farmer's Dog. Eating processed food for every meal isn't healthy. We all know that. And the kibble that you give your dog is subject to multiple rounds of high heat processing, making it an ultra processed food. Try something fresh for your dog. Dogs will eat anything, shoes, toilet paper, garbage, and even kibble. But just because they'll eat it doesn't mean it's healthy food. Here's an idea. What if dogs ate real food? Why does dog food have to be dry food or wet food? Why can't it just be food? So that's what Farmer's Dog does. I've been using it with Stella for four or five years now. Love it. She loves it. It is real food. It's delivered straight to your house in uh, a freezer uh, box so you can pop, pop them in the freezer take them out she eats we eat it's the best so it's real food feed your dog the farmer's dog it's real fresh healthy food with whole meat and veggies gently cooked in human grade kitchens to preserve their nutritional value it's personalized as well so just tell them about your dog they will deliver a personalized vet developed recipe for as little as two dollars a day so that makes sure that your dog is eating all the different vitamins nutrients that it needs it's pre-portioned meals arrive in pre-portioned, ready-to-serve packs, conveniently delivered on your schedule, so you can do every two weeks, every month, whatever you want to do. It's convenient and fresh. Dog people all across the country, myself included, have ordered millions of meals from Farmer's Dogs, so it's never been easier to invest in your dog's health with fresh food. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at Farmer's Dog slash PMT. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to FarmersDog.com slash PMT to get 50% off. That's the FarmersDog.com slash PMT. Okay, FAQs. We got Hank here. Memes is going to read them. Ooh. Memes, do you know how to read? Slightly. Memes, quick Islanders minute. We're going to do that now? Yeah, do it now. All right. Power play is terrible. Okay. Bad, we knew that bad. going in. We how did. About the PK. 
PK wasn't great. Okay. Especially because the Hurricanes have one of the worst power plays in the league also. Oh. That's bad. And yeah. you let up a power play goal. So it's like the verbal meme, Nick Cage looking at the guy from The Last of Us driving. Okay. Got it. Don't know that I guy's don't name. understand that meme, but Pedro that's Pascal. Good. Yeah, yeah, Pedro Pascal. Oh, I did TikTok with him. Yeah. Go the, follow me on TikTok. Nick, Nick Cage stares at him and he's just smiling. Okay. Uh, so, and how are we feeling? Lost game one. That's okay. Lost game one. Probably should have won. Mm. I, I've, I felt like they could have won that game. What was the final score? 2 1. 2 1. Okay. Yeah, he probably could have won. They like set the record. Wait, wasn't it three one? Did they not score an empty netter? No. Oh, okay, two one. Two one. That's pretty much gonna be every game. Yep. So you just need the puck to bounce your way. Yep. But it's just pucks bouncing our way. Pucks bouncing our way. And they just gotta score goals. That was just me and my dad afterwards. It is. <laughs> it is important to score goals. You have to score to win. That's true. Yeah, at least one. But most of the time, more than one. Yeah, more than one. Yeah, at least one. Okay, so you're not. You haven't lost confidence. No, no, no. I'm. I. I think we're fine. Okay. Almost a statement loss? No. Okay. All right. Well, I was I was trying to help you there. Statement loss would have been great. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. But I, Frankie Borelli was tweeting, like, we, we will win games like this. Oh, yeah, and NHL Eventually. rigged. Oh, NHL rigged? NHL oh, there rigged. was a bad there call. Was a, there was a phantom call. Okay. All right. Well, the, yeah, well, it's NHL. It's time to talk about, you know, late hits or uh, – Guys leaving their feet and and slow mo and all that stuff with NHL playoffs. Yeah, but this one was just like he slapped the stick, and they just called the slashing, and then they wound up scoring on it. Bullshit. That's your least favorite penalty, Hank. Slashing. Uh okay. That wasn't like a joke or anything. It was just, I was just leaning into you being a puckhead. Got it. Yeah. Wait. Well, what is your least favorite penalty? I hit it when uh, they they <laughs> shoot it at the boards and they mean to shoot it and it goes over. It's delay a game. Yeah, yeah. That, that's okay. bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Puck out of bounds. All right. Uh, go ahead, FAQs. Sup, fellas. Sup. Want to throw a hypothetical out there. Ooh. Let's assume you're all in studio recording an episode when a fight to the death breaks out. Who do you think goes after who? And who is the last man standing? Love Ooh. you guys. Well, I feel like it would matter how the like a fight to the death doesn't just break out. Mm, okay, well, I mean, but it, let's just say it did hypothetically. I know Billy would go for me right away. Uh, he's had that in his eyes for years. I think what would happen is PFT would help me beat the fuck out of Billy, and we would like we would kill Billy. Um, I think Max, Max would probably squash Jake right away, or would you go straight for Hank? I would probably go for Jake. No offense, Jake, but we have had some you know some some tough history uh, where you've alphaed me. So I would probably just have to take you out before you could take me out. I think I have, I think Max, I have loyalty, are we counting memes in here too? Memes is in here, he's going down first. Memes is a tough <laughs> motherfucker. I think Max, I have Max in, like Max is one of my guys now, like he's very loyal to me. I think I could be like, Max, go kill everyone, and then at the end be like, Max, now kill yourself. And he would just do that, and I would survive. Fair? Yeah, for yeah, sure, for sure. take one out. Yeah. Yeah. I just walked out of the room before. It's <laughs> no, you can't do that. Billy, just, what would you do? You would definitely no go way. for me, Billy. You know you would. No, if it's the typical setup of it, Hank would definitely go for Jake first, meaning I'd have a free reign. I think if it was like a zombie virus thing where we all just went berserk and try to kill each other, that your proximity to PFT leaves me free. So then the only time is I have to get uh, Max, Max before he can get out from the behind there. Mm. And little do you guys know, so I have an the, the winner of It would be the winner of PFT versus Big Cat. Winner of me versus Jake, and then the winner versus Billy and Max. But Max, Max would win that. No, but Max is in the corner. He's disadvantaged by his positioning. I can close him off. I could come from over the top. Okay. But he's not going to be able to get out of there fast enough. So if I can get to him early enough, I think I have advantage. And then Hank and Jake, I think, is going to take a little longer. This oh, is, this wow. <laughs> he said that's going to be a 12-round fi- uh, fight. we're te- teaming up and taking down Billy now. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying this is like... Yeah, you're saying no alliances because in reality, yeah. if there were alliances, PFT and I would ally, and then we'd probably like do rocks, paper, scissors, shoot to see who has to kill themselves at the end. Like We would waste everyone and then be like, yeah. all right, now one of us has to go. So then I'd be in the corner. Hopefully my early jump gets Max, and then I have to turn around and deal with what's going on here. Max, then- you would... Fu- one thing about Max, he would fuck Billy up. Yeah, that is a thing about me. Yeah, that is a thing about, yeah. He would fuck you up, Billy. When's Rough and Rowdy? 
Uh, if it's like less than two weeks, that would be sick to do. Listen, my boy Max, <laughs> he's we. If it's if he it's, needs a little fight camp before he's ready for rough and rowdy. I need a lot of fight camp. <laughs> I mean, he, he was strategic about. We it need two to go weeks. to the mountains. Is, is it in two weeks? I, you know, you could get your you know one weekend off. We could really get it going. I would take Max in this room though, just out of like Philly scumbag. You yeah. know, yeah. He he would grab people's dicks. He would bite ticks off. We also got to look at the best weapons in the room. The barbell, I think, if you could okay. use it. This isn't a real... Ah, oh, uh, fuck. That would suck. I have, that I would a, suck. I go to get someone. There's a Liver King axe underneath the sofa. I don't know where it is. Right. There's a golf club there. I really wish I had a gun. I could just pull out and be like, what do you guys think about this? All right. That'd be cool. Good question. Good question. Throw some weights at people. All right, Sound off up. in the comments. Sound off in the comments. Who is the guest you didn't think you would get along with before an interview, but ended up having a good relationship with? And vice versa, who is the one you thought you would vibe with really well, but didn't? Ooh. Well, the one I would say that changed my opinion on how we do, because there's a lot of guests we get offered. Some of them we don't do because we just won't be interested in whatever they're doing. The one I would say changed my opinion on, like, we need to be more open, and we have been, is Jerry O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell... I, I mean, we knew who he was, but we were like, all right, I guess we'll have him on. And then he became our best friend. So that was a definite like, hey, give everyone a chance. Uh, who's the one that we didn't vibe with that we thought we would? I thought me and Kareem would have something. Big Poppy. <laughs> Kareem was not. That was he was not happy to do our podcast. He was very upset that he was with us in any capacity. I'm trying to think who else, uh, like, I never thought we would vibe with, like, Dan Marino. I'm trying to, who else, who else did we walk away and we're like, ah, that one. Well, that there's a comedian that shall go uh, nameless because they threatened to sue us. Um, good news is that I just said comedian. There's We've had a, n a number of comedians on, so you can't. Unless the person hasn't been on twice. If the person's been on twice, it's not them. But if it's person's been on once, they threaten to sue us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sound off in the comments. Who do you think it was? <laughs> they're like legit threatened to sue us if we didn't like take down the whole episode. And we're like, uh, that's not how it works. And it really, we didn't do anything bad at all. If, in terms of our interviews that like, there'll be interviews that we do sometimes. We're like, ooh. We didn't really click. That was our mistake. This one was not our mistake. The guy just sucked. Or girl. We don't have girls on the show. We're trying to get more. <laughs> <laughs> How much work behind the scenes gets put into something like the golf video? Between everyone's schedule, oh, good camera question. crews, getting the okay so honestly, from the course that much. editing. I don't know what's taking so long. Well, I yeah, could, I could start. I had to get up at 5 in the morning. That was pretty tough. On, like, one of my only days off. Uh, Max, Memes, why don't you guys chime in? How long? No, there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, me and Max have gone through. I'm, I'm now in, in the in the, in the process here. Uh, golf is a lot of graphics and a lot of shot tracers. If you watch a golf video and you're not able to see where the ball is going, it's kind of pointless. So there's just – it's not as simple as just, like, a, a PMT vlog where it's, like, you're basically just shooting stuff and then editing it and kind of just – punching it together there's a lot of you shoot it you put it in and then you have to add you know probably three or four graphics per like shot really so it's a lot from my perspective it seems like a lot because when we go out there we had four people with cameras and after every hole we had to do a clap to reset the cameras so that they can go back and look at the footage a lot of moving parts a lot of like because it's weird when you're on a golf course it's different than being in front of a microphone in a studio you're just saying shit constantly, so there could be a funny line that they got to find or some weird moment. Um, I think there will be a little teaser for the golf video. Um, I was a tremendous teammate to Hank. I didn't bash him whatsoever when he was not close to me. I, I watched it last night. <laughs> what did I say? I a was... lot of lot of mean things. <laughs> a lot of basically. Hank watched a rough cut. He watched a rough cut. So I'd, I'd, I watched the long. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to be teammates <laughs> with anyone else in the world. So it's you know. But yeah, there might have been some times where when you were like twenty feet away out of earshot, I would mutter something under my breath, and then when you came back, I was like, "Way to go, Hank! Let's keep going." But that 
No spoilers. It's funny. It's not nice, but it's funny. And when it comes out, <laughs> people will enjoy it. <laughs> okay. What will you miss most about New York when you move? Do you have any new ideas slash segments for when you move to Chicago? Who? Good question. We have a lot of new stuff we're going to do. Uh, both PMT and also like office wise, we're going to be streaming a lot. A lot. Want to talk about that, Hank? No. Okay. We are going to be streaming a lot. There will be a lot of, think of like uh, stool streams, but on steroids and with a ton of space. And less uh, organized. And less organized, but more in a fun chaotic. way. Yes, more chaotic. So you'll see a lot of us doing random shit. Just being like, oh, I bet you can't do this, and then being able to prove it right away. Um, we basically have, if we, it's, it's imagine if we had a basketball court right outside our studio now. Like, we have, yeah. we have it's, for creative people, it's like a, a, a giant, just here you go, do whatever you want, and we're going to be able to utilize that in a way we haven't had that right. for seven years. Since I watched the first episode of Robin Big, I wanted a fun, a fun factory. Uh, that shit ruled. Uh, what are you going to miss most about New York? I am going to miss absolutely nothing about this place. Okay. I hate getting on the subway. I hate getting off. I hate where our office is. It's just about <laughs> homeless people and, and drug overdoses. You're just walking over, I think, dead people to get into the office every day. Uh, I did see a woman just, like, give me just straight up eye contact while she was pissing right in front of our office the other day. That was kind of cool, though. It was... Borderline hot. If you want to put it on the bonk list, that's fine, but it was kind of like, a, what's going on here? I will miss the maybe one or two times a year that I'm either going to a game at MSG or going home on the Amtrak where I can just walk and be five minutes away. Yeah. Um, what are you going to miss, Max? Um, I'm going to miss a lot. I love New York City, honestly. Oh. Um, but, no, I, I gasped because I, yesterday I saw – I was walking down the street and there was a guy – literally butt ass naked just shitting right in front of my face <laughs> and i was walking with my girlfriend and it was one of those things where i was like holy fuck and i like actually moved her yeah out of the way. It, it, it was a big fight or flight moment i was like <laughs> that man is shitting right in my face yeah like i think there's good parts of new york there's good parts like, of if, every if, big if, city yeah if we lived if our office was in a cool area where it's like you walk outside there's like a park or you can you know we just walk outside into just chaos i uh i actually will miss um I've, I've grown to like New York a lot more than when we first moved here. There is... You live in Brooklyn. Yeah. that's Some may say that's more New York than Manhattan. I guess. I mean, that's true New Yorkers. Uh, I would say I will miss... New York is very different than any, any other city in that it's like... There's so many different walks of life, so many different people and characters, and just like weirdos, but like in a good way. I don't know. I will miss a little of that. Some of the edge. A little of the edge. Tiny bit of the edge. No? No, I'm, I'm, I'm literally racking my brain to think of what I'm going to miss. But it's like, you know, there's good food and good restaurants. There's good food and restaurants in Chicago. Yeah. There's water. There's water it in is, Chicago. Uh, I know there's been a hotly contested debate online uh, recently. But, yes, I am a big believer that every city has good parts, bad parts, uh, good things, you know, negatives, all that. But living in a city is fun. And you make it what, what you want to make it. So, yeah. I will miss a little of the edge, though. I also started liking New York once COVID hit because, like, the net, no, like it was, like, half capacity. I, and I don't want to sound like a New York hater. I just have – living here sucks. I will be excited, it's a grind. I will be excited to come back here and visit because you can come here for 48 hours and do everything. You yeah. can eat at a good place. You can go out have a crazy night. There's all types of – but, like, I'm not a huge nightlife guy anymore. I'm not even a huge foodie, really. Like, so – Living here and paying what you have to pay to live here is not worth it, but I think it'll be fun to visit. I love it here. Yeah? It's great. The I mean, only big downside coming from Florida, it's really hard to play golf, tennis, pretty much any sport. Like, yeah. That's yeah. something you, yes, have it to, is. you have to make a big effort and it eats yeah, up to get a lot out of your day just to do something that anywhere else is pretty easy. I guess, yeah, the only thing I'll miss about New York is the people. For real. I do like the, the people are weird. They're interesting. They're cool. They're gritty. I don't know. I do like Some the walking aspect, too. You can walk everywhere yeah. and do anything yeah. except play golf. Except play golf. All right, <laughs> last one. I will not miss my commute. That is ass. Yeah, uh, people don't know, but memes commutes like 90 minutes uh, one way. <laughs> yeah, and then same back. <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's. It, I mean, it's insane. Yeah, I hate it's it. It's insane. Hello, PMT. I've been trying to figure out for a long time, and maybe it's an inside joke you don't want to disclose 
but what is the common denominator for guests that get the, and now for something completely different, snippet before the interview? Oh, that's only I didn't know we do that. <laughs> that's for a two guest episode, right? That's a yeah. two for. Oh, yeah. interesting. I didn't know we do that. I should probably listen to the show. <laughs> I thought that was pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. Yeah, that does seem self-explanatory. Yeah, because it's just one interview and now for a different interview. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, anything else? That's it? No. Oh. Nothing. Have you ever gotten <laughs> Have you ever gotten it? I've never even gotten it. Oh, memes. All right. Hank, have you ever gotten the lottery ball? No. By the way, I posted it, all the stats publicly. People are coming at Big Cat for only getting one, but... For- I've I gotten fly. one. They fly forever. What What do you want to do? I've gotten one. People are like, are you going to talk about the fact you've only got one? Yeah. You just said it. I got one. Yeah. One is all you need. And people do forget the day that I got one, I actually got two. Well. well it didn't well, count officially, but we were here doing uh, short porch. I've gotten one then too, just no, officially. No, you actually haven't gotten it unofficially. I mean, if we're just making stuff up. I, I mean, it was, I it was literally taped. No, no, I'm not taking credit for yeah. it, but I'm saying like I no, literally got it in two days, in w- two in one day. You've never gotten even when we're fucking around. You don't know that. So go to my Twitter. I tweeted out the Google Doc. It's visible to anyone. Thank you, Jake, for backing me up. Flags fly forever. If you had one, what would you? It, the oh, people can wait. start. We just had this debate, right? About fifty years <laughs> Super Bowl. If, if if Hank gets two, and I'm still stuck on one, then he can flip it on me. Absolutely, that would be fair. But right now, I got one. You got none. You've never gotten this. You have a ring the rest of your life. Have you ever gotten this? No. I have. Ask me that. Ask me the same question. Have you ever gotten this? Yes. Uh, okay, numbers. Six, nine. One. My son 18. has two. 18. Six. 17. 20. What were you looking at before? It's a different angle, you know? What was your guess means? One. 55. Was that one of the ones that Stathole told him to guess? Oh, no. Oh, no. I think it was. We've gotten a lot of double numbers recently. 77 hit twice. 99 hit a month ago. When J.J. Watt told him to do that, and he didn't. False never happened. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is awkward. This is bad radio. It's not like we ask every single time for a stat or something. It's fine. <laughs> no, stat hole said uh, 50-54. Ah, um, dumb fuck. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, love you guys. The Big Cat Public Safety Act requires current private owners of Big Cats to register them with the U.S. Federal Wildlife Service no later than June 18th, 2023 in order to continue to legally possess their Big Cats. So, Big Cats are now regulated. Thank <laughs> you.